start with our Rosaneth. Rosaneth, kindly uh, unmute and say hello to everyone and then mute. Uh, please unmute, we cannot hear you. Hello. Hello, good morning. Yes, good morning. Morning. Yes, I'm Rosneth Gaki. Thank you, Rosneth. Uh, yeah. Kindly and welcome to today's meeting. Kindly mute. We now go to Saul. Saul S. Kuri, kindly unmute uh, and say hello to everyone. Yes, hello. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Happy to see you. Yes, Saul, we can hear you. Please continue. Yes, I'm saying hello to everyone. Is everybody okay? Yes, everyone is doing we are. okay. Oh, Santi Sana. Karibi Sana, welcome on board. Kindly unmute. We now move on to Alfred Ongoro. Alfred, kindly unmute and say hello to everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you? We're fine. Okay, Karibu Sana. Thank you so much, Alfred. Kindly mute. We now move to Alvin. Alvin Mbugwa, kindly unmute and say hello. Hello, good morning. Morning. Good morning. I'm Alvin Mbugwa. Thank you, Elvin, and welcome on board. Kindly mute. We now Thank move you. on to uh, John Joguna. John, kindly unmute and say hi to everyone. John, if you can hear me. Uh, you said John Joguna. Yes, John Joguna. Mm, okay. All right. I think he cannot hear me, although I can just see him on the screen. Okay, we'll just come back to him once he's ready. I'll just uh, now move on to Paratina. Kindly unmute and say hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, we now move on to Leo Kadia. Leo Kadia, kindly unmute and say hi to everyone. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, Leo Kadia, and welcome on board. We now move on to Willie Obai. Willie, kindly unmute and say hi. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome on board. Uh, Geoffrey, Geoffrey, can you unmute and say hi? Geoffrey, if you can hear me. Right, I think he cannot get us. We now move to Lillian Wanja. Lillian, can Lillian mute and say hi? Hello, Lillian, can you hear me? Lillian Wanja? All right, we don't seem to have her. We move on to Sandra. Sandra and Katha, can Lillian mute and say hi to everyone? Sandra, if you can hear me. Okay, we don't seem to get her. We now move to someone who has registered in as Techno. Come on, Techno, kindly uh, unmute, say hi, and also tell us your name.
they don't seem to get us. We move to Ruth Mugo. Ruth, if you can hear me, can you unmute and say hi to everyone? Hi, everyone. My name is Ruth Mugo. Thank you, Ruth, and welcome on board. Kindly mute. We now go. We now move to Frederick Owako. Frederick, kindly unmute and say hi. Hi. Good morning, everyone. I'm Fred Owako from Nakuru County. Thank you. Thank you, Frederick, and welcome on board. Please mute. We now move on to Masimugo. Masi, kindly unmute and say hi to everyone. Good morning, everyone. My name is Masi Mugo from Nakuru County. Thank you, Masi, and welcome on board. Please mute. We now move to uh, Stephen. Stephen Ogoto, kindly unmute and say hi to everyone. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good, good morning, members. Good morning. Steve Ogoto from Nakuru County. Steve Ogoto from Nakuru County. Thank you so much, Stephen from Nakuru County. Welcome on board. Uh, please mute. We now move to Enoch Onkopa. Enoch, if you can hear me, kindly unmute and say hi. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Enoch. Yes, my name is Enoch Onkoba. I'm also from Nakuru County. Thank you, Enoch, and welcome on board. Please mute. Yep. We now go to Jackson Tiga. Jackson, kindly unmute if you can hear me and say hello. Jackson, if you can hear me. I think we cannot get to Jackson. Let me just give a, all right. I've just seen him just uh, sending us a clap there. I think he can hear us. Maybe he has a problem with his audio. As he fixes that, we'll just move on. Let me now move on to Kelvin Olo. Kelvin, kindly unmute and say hi to everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Kevin Odo from Nakuru. Thank you, Kevin. And welcome on board. Please mute. We now move to Florence Monge. Florence, if you can hear me, kindly unmute and say hi to everyone. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I'm Florence Monge from Nakuru County. Thank you, friends, and welcome on board. We now move to Faith Chirotich. Rotich, sorry. Faith, if you can hear me, can you unmute and say hi? Faith, if you can hear me. All right. I hope I haven't left anyone out. John, you're going to let me come back to you. If you can hear me, please, I can see you on the screen. Can you unmute and say hi to everyone? Uh, hi. I've registered my presence. Thank I don't know you. If yes, yes, we, we, we can hear you now. Thank you and welcome on board. I uh, Apart from uh, our facilitator today, Rosalind Odede, our chair, John Imoite, our SG, uh, Benson Gisore, and our moderator today, Ms. Lillian uh, Anyango. Apart from those, I don't know if I've left anyone out. I can see Angeline uh, Kinoti. Angeline, kindly uh, unmute and say hello to everyone if you can hear me. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you? We fine. Thank you, Angeline. Thank you, Angeline, and welcome on board. I'll just uh, kindly going to request all of us to just mute our mics so that we do not uh, interfere with the meeting today. One, if you're not speaking, I'm going to kindly request that we mute our mics. Let me take this opportunity to welcome you on board. My name is Maureen Gishana from CMD Kenya. Let me just say karibu sana to today's meeting and happy new year to everyone. I'm actually so glad to have you guys on board so that we can continue with the conversation 
from where we left uh, last year. It's a new year. We having on board new things for you guys and your party in specific. So to just go direct to today's um, meeting, we just uh, organized this meeting to just give you uh, guys a chance as a political party to just, you know, go through your nomination and election rules, review them, update them so that you can strengthen them so that you can ensure that whatever you guys are working with is what is working for everyone within the party. So without so much further ado, I'm going to welcome, uh, I'm going to welcome Lillian Anyango on board, who will welcome the chair and the SG to just welcome on board his, poly, his party members. And then we will just move on to the presentation by our facilitator, Ms. Rosalina Odete. Lillian Anyango, if you can hear me. Maureen, thank you so much. Thank you so much. We And thank you so much, members, for logging in and logging in in good time. We appreciate that you thought that this meeting was important for all of us, and therefore you set time for us to continue. Um, mine is to say Happy New Year. It's a blessed new year, and we are looking forward to very, very good things. Uh, I want to welcome all of us on board. It's a very good and exciting discussion we should have here. But before I say much, allow me to invite the SG, who will then invite the chair, and the chair will sum it up by asking Rosaline to take us through the document. So karibu sana bwana SG. Bwana SG if you can hear me please unmute your mic. Yes, Maureen, I can hear you. Sorry for the connection issues. Thank you. Yeah, let me say good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome all of you. We don't take it for granted that you're finding time to attend to these uh, party activities. We really do appreciate. Um, I like to appeal that now that we are virtual, if kindly you don't mind, you can only mute your audios, but not your videos. It's also a chance for us to interact and they know one another, if that's not too much to ask. Otherwise, I'm asking and um, praying that we have a fruitful discussion. And uh, as for me, I'm ready, let's share, and i like to get your feedback. Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you, thank you, Bana SG. You are to invite uh, Chairman, Mr. Imoite John. Oh, thank you for the sorry. welcoming. I remarks. missed it. You are to invite Chairman. <laughs> All right, I stand guided. Uh, and thank you for reminding me. Uh, I also am conveying uh, greetings from the party leader whom I just spoke to about 20 minutes ago. He knows you're here and is very excited about it. He promised to join you in the next meeting. Uh, and you can see, as Ken see, we don't take things for granted because this is serious business. And especially at this time that we are, we don't just uh, want to shy from you. We are here, full house. All the NEC members, most of them are here. Any concerns, raise them. And at this point, let me invite our able chairman, Bwana John Emoite, to welcome you all. Thank you. Karibu, Bwana Chair. Uh, Asante SG. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, uh, happy, happy New Year. 
Apple New Year June. Um Asante Asante Asante. Uh we would want to say that uh, of course we are grateful to our maker uh for having uh, made uh, us to cross over to 21. Uh and of course uh, this being uh, uh the last year and then we get into the election one it is critical that we engage uh in continual conversations around and about the issues that are going to impact uh the elections of uh, 2022 uh in this regard of course i would like to welcome each and every one of you to today's session um we uh, uh, are saying of course as a party that uh, this is among the many uh, other issues that would like to uh, get the membership's input uh, when you're talking about uh, nomination rules this is a especially important uh, because uh, hapa kwa certificates in your uh, mambo huwa inaenda mrama uh, you find uh, uh, a good number of times uh, people who have won nominations uh, who have the support of the people and who therefore uh, deserve to be given tickets don't get them uh, what we are saying as knc is that we would like to uphold uh, the tenets of democracy uh, once you're a party member you're interested in uh, taking part in an election we would want to respect that and of course uh, abide by the rules that are set uh, which is why this is a very uh, a very important uh, session so i basically want to wish uh, each and every one of us uh fruit, fruitful engagement uh let's be let's be open minded we encourage uh, we encourage uh, uh freedom of expression uh, don't hold things back uh of course uh we also want to be guarded uh, somewhat in uh, how we put our views across uh because we would want to maintain respect for one another and that sort of thing but very very important is uh this 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 is a part of our very important policy documents so we would like uh, members input and i don't see anything that can make someone to want to say that uh, uh i want to say this but i can't or this or that or something like that so let's be open minded about this um cmd uh i see morin is around and uh, the other members of the team asante ni sana uh, for keeping us in mind when it comes to some of these things uh madam roslin uh, i see you you're, you're in the house asante sana for being a, an invaluable partner taking us through um, um this journey kwa hivyo sina mengi ya kusema ama kwa hayo mengi uh may i wish all of us uh fruitful uh gainful deliberations asante ni sana thank you so much thank you so much bana chair for the good opening remarks and the warm welcome so Rosalyn, if I could just take you briefly through who is on board. We do have the NEC represented by the chair, the secretary general. We have the youth league leader. We have the women league leader on board. We have uh, aspirants, young aspirants. And we are also expecting two sitting MCAs. That is Honorable Jerida and Honorable Karen Magara. So we have a very good array of people who are both experienced and people who would want to be part of the nomination process. So you, you're welcome. We are all ears and we trust that this will be not just a learning session, but also a session to raise concerns that will take us through this important process. 
Karibu sana madam. Ah uh, Thank you Lilian. Uh, uh, good morning members. Good morning. I want to start I want to start by wishing you all a very blessed and successful year 2021. Uh, I think this is a year of hope and I, I hear a, a year in which we will all realize uh, all the good things that God has planned for us. So I wish you all a very blessed and successful year. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair uh, John, and thank you, SG, as well. And thank you, everyone who is here today. Now, today we are going to discuss uh, the nomination rules that KNC has. And um, I received these rules yesterday. And they are very, very, it's very lengthy and very bulky. And to unpackage it will take quite a bit of time. So uh, Lillian, we may not have a Q&A at the end. I'm proposing that as we go along, because how I propose to do this is, uh, I'll first of all just talk generally about uh, party primaries. And then I will go into your rules, which we will try and look through as we go along. And as we go along, I'll be raising issues and uh, members are also allowed to raise issues as we go along because I don't think we'll have time to come back. So is it okay that we work through it as we go? And let's not be repetitive. If somebody has that, raised an that's issue agreeable. that you agree with, uh, yeah, and if somebody has raised an issue that you agree with, there's no point of repeating it because we have a uh, limited time to do quite a bit of work. And uh, I hope uh, Chair SG and Lillian, you're taking notes because I think your rules have a lot of work input needed uh, after this. So mm -hmm. uh, please take notes because uh, you need to go and rework these rules from here. That, that's my summation after reading them. They are, they are still very raw and um, I'm not sure they're ready for application immediately, especially that now that we are facing an election. So is that agreed, Lillian, that we can work as we go? Agreed. Okay, thank you. So let's just start I quickly. I'll, agree. We thank will you. Do I'll that be too. rushing yes. through. Please, if I'm too fast, stop me. But I'm just trying to beat the clock. <laughs> yes. So, yes, uh, party primaries, as we all know, are internal party processes that help us choose uh, candidates uh, for the elections. And uh, this is done internally uh, through either elections appointment, a selection, it depends on what rules and regulations the party has put in place for those uh, selections. Uh, the benefits of having party primaries are quite many. Uh, uh, one of them is that it helps the political party identify a person who is most likely to win a general election so that you don't give it to a weak candidate, but you give it to somebody who can actually face opponents from other political parties at the ballot point. Uh, box and win the general election. So it's very important that you test his might, you test his popularity on the ground through a party primary before the main election. Again, party primaries are the window to a democratic process. If a party primary is free and fair, then we know we are already promoting democracy. If it's not free and fair again, then again, we're already compromising uh, democracy. So party primaries are actually the window uh, to, uh, to, to uh, democracy. Then the other thing is that the party primaries gives the candidate legitimacy because it, once you're elected by a popular vote of your members, then it gives you the legitimacy to actually stand there as opposed to where you're rigged in, then you keep facing opposition. Some of even your own members run away, become independent and face your candidate again and beat them. It's very embarrassing. So clear, free and fair elections give legitimacy and mandate to the candidate you, you come up with. Uh, it also gives the party visibility and significance. So when we have party primaries, people listen in and say, oh, that party is holding primaries and they were free and fair, that seems to be a good party to belong to. So it gives you that sort of visibility and actually kind of um, um, advertises the party in its own way. Then it's also an empowerment process for, for members. It's an empowerment process for members uh, to engage in party activities 
party strategy and key decision. When you empower your members to elect their leaders, I think that's a very powerful statement about the party, its ideals, and um, it, it's, uh, its strategy in general. And then uh, this one may not be liked quite a lot by the leaders, but it also helps the party members to be a decision maker and overrule parties that want to entrench their own leaders and want to entrench the people into the party system. It actually allows the party to speak and not its, its leaders to, to determine how things go. So those are the benefits of party primaries and what party primaries are. Now, what are the critical aspects of nomination rules? What would you want to see in nomination rules? And this is very, very brief outline and overline. But in any nomination rules, we must have three main organs. There must be the governing body of that political party, there must be an elections board, and then there must be a dispute resolution board. And uh, one of the key aspects is separation of powers. No one should belong to more than one of these bodies. If you're in the governing body, you shouldn't sit on the election board or the dispute resolution board and vice versa and vice versa. So separation of powers should be a key element of these organs in your nomination rules and should come out clearly. Then the other thing is the rules must clearly state the function of each of these bodies and ensure there's no ambiguity or overlap. Make it very, very clear so that we know where the extent to what we can do or what we cannot do. Then the qualifications of members of these organs should also be clearly stated so that we are not in doubt that when uh, uh, Lillian is appointed, post that saying, oh, oh, we make the qualifications very, very clear. And then we put in a process for appointment. How are they appointed? Let us not leave that in doubt as well. And I think one good thing to have uh, is provisions for gender balance and inclusivity in these main organs of the, of, the, of the party. Then the other crucial document is called the party register. And there must be in the nomination rules reference to the party register, who has custody, how many types we have, how do we verify, how do members register as members, how do members access the register. All this uh, should be available. And when can we register? When does registration stop? And things like that. Please make every indication and parity around the party registers, because I think this has been a big challenge for most political parties. They go to elections and they're not quite sure who their members are and who is in their register. And they end up using the IBC register, which is not very useful. Uh, then the application for nomination process should also be clearly set out the manner of applying if there are forms to fill let those forms be part of the appendix to that uh, nomination rule so that it's clear what we are referring to the fees the qualifications how vetting will apply how one may appeal decisions and things like that then also we need to have uh, provisions around the election process itself now in this election process let's talk about the type of primaries what are we going to do are we going to have delegates are we going to have a ballot box election are we going to queue? Just make it clear the type of primary you want to engage in. And then who may vote? How are polling stations identified? Because location of polling stations can make or break uh, 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 primaries. Because if you locate the polling stations in certain areas and leave out certain areas, you can be disenfranchising. So the location of polling stations is also very crucial. Security of the ballot. Uh, this just means the entire thing, the ballot box, uh, the ballot paper, and all ballot processes. How do we secure them? Just make sure that that's provided for. Uh, agent voting hours, counting and declaration of results, and appeal. And then also, how do we achieve this gender balance inclusivity that's required of us in the Constitution? Funding of SIGs. SIGs are special interest groups. Uh, these are women, youth, disabled, minorities, and the marginalized. There's provision for this in the parent law in the, the Political Parties Act, and therefore there must be uh, a provision for this in our nomination. If you receive the money from the Political Parties Fund, how do we tr truncate that to our SIGs? And how do we apply for it? And how do we access it? That should be all very, very clear. Probably even how to audit it should come up. And then how do we ensure free and fair processes? We must have some sort of declaration in there. Result slips and nomination certificates, who signs them, uh, who are the authorized signatories, those must be clearly indicated. Then the other critical aspect is about the internal dispute resolution board. 
And um, we must be clear, are we devolving this uh, IDRB or does it, or do we only have a national one? How do we access it? Uh, what is the cost of accessing it? What is our right of appeal? Who may appeal? Is it only the candidate or can a, a voter also appeal and say things went wrong? Uh, what's the obligation of the electoral body to provide records? These are records from the nomination process itself or other documents that they have custody of. What are the timelines for accessing the IDRB? Uh, does it have to give reasoned and written decisions? Uh, how do we get those proceedings? Because if I want to appeal the IDRB decision, how do I get the proceedings of the IDRB? And um, then there must be a clear undertaking that the party will honor the outcome of either the IDRB or any court appeal processes that are taken. And then whether there's a provision for ADR should also be clearly indicated. And then finally, we must have offenses and punishment. And these offenses must relate not just to the nomination day or the polling day, but it should refer to the entire process. So if it's during campaigns, if it is during the nomination process, if there's fraud in details, it must relate to the entire uh, process because it is, a, it is a process, it's not a day, it's not an event, it's an entire process. So offenses, and uh, it, it's by everyone, election officials, aspirants, party members, supporters, let us have the offenses coming through very clearly. And then what are the obligations of aspirants and candidates as all this happens? So those are some of the few critical aspects you would want to look out for in your nomination rules to ensure uh, that they meet uh, the spirit and intention of a free, fair, and democratic party nomination. So, yes, uh, Lilian Anyango, you're asking, by governing body, do you mean NEC? Yes, the governing body is normally referred to as NEC in most parties, but people could call it anything else. So there must be a body that is above the NEB and the IDRB. And normally they call them NEC, but different parties can call them different names. So thank you. Any other question from the, that part of the presentation? An input? An input, yes. Yeah, the governing bodies are, are clearly spelled in the party constitution. Mm -hmm. NEC is one of them. And then we have the National Executive Committee, which is able to work at a SNIP, uh, I mean, within short time. And that's the one that, uh, according to the KNC constitution, that's the one that uh, oversees such matters. Reason being, NEC is quite large. And you know, in case of nominations, you, it, it takes a long time and then there's a process of calling the NEC and with the timelines, which are quite tight, so the National Executive Committee comes into place. Just that's, that's what I was adding on that. Thank you, and I think we're just saying the same thing. Uh, just make sure in the rules you specify clearly who that is, okay? So let's move to the KNC nomination rules that we received, and um, it starts off by setting the guiding spirit, which is fine. And then it sets out uh, the constitution uh, when this was adopted. And uh, I think that is fine. And as members, I'm sure you're aware of this. Uh, then we go into definition of key terms and uh, I will not dwell on these uh, because uh, it, uh, they, they develop as you develop the document. So for now, I will not dwell on the key terms uh, that you have in the document, okay? Uh, there's only one thing I want to ask. Of course, when you see yellow, it's either typing error or something. Uh, on the... Yes. Go ahead. Just, just a clarification before we proceed. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I wanted to bring to your concern that you ought to clarify that the funding for SIGs, funding for SIGs, it is not common across the board. I think for KNC, what happens is that uh, it is handled case by case because the, it's possible that we send a message that every person who falls under SIG bracket will expect funding at a nomination. Yeah, that is fine. Uh, what I was saying is critical aspect of the of our nomination rules is we must at least allude to that fund 
and make provisions on how it will be done. So if it is on an application, make sure you state that uh, those who want to access this fund, it's available, but you must apply in this manner. And these are the ways we will consider. That's clear? OK, thank you. So yes, so when we are doing the, uh, the definitions, for instance, uh, Maureen, if you can go to person with disability, Yes, it says there that shall have the meaning ascribed to it by the definition contained in the Constitution of Kenya. Now, if you look at the Constitution, it doesn't actually describe a PWD, but it talks about PWDs. So I don't know what's happening here, but let's try and align uh, those kinds of things. I see the same happens with gender and the same happens with, I think, women. So we've got to look out for those uh, in the document. Uh, let's now move to organs. Just a second. Yes. I sir. wanted to comment about uh, PWDs. Mm -hmm. We can get a better definition by using a document uh, called UNCRPD, United Nations yes. Convention on the Rights of uh, Persons with Disabilities, which is a Kenyan law because um, uh, Kenya yeah, is have, um, yeah. as ratified. A signatory. Mm. Yeah, so that will give a better definition, yes. Thank you. Thank you for that contribution. So that, that's how we can improve the document by aligning the definitions to what exists and actually confirming that the constitution doesn't have. So when we leave it as it is now, uh, we have a gap. So let's just do that. Uh, and thank you for that input. Now, when we go to the organs, you have the first organ there being the National Executive Committee. And... Um, you set out uh, the powers, general powers of the National Executive Committee. So it is a body with the ultimate authority over the nomination process. Uh, it makes rules governing the nomination process and it may delegate its functions to any other body, including the National Elections Board and the National Executive Management Committee. So those are generally some of it. And uh, it's, it's a very strong body because all employees are supposed to work under its directions and guidelines. And it has the final authority uh, to receive and consider reports of the nominations from the National Election Board. So it's a very powerful body as you can see there and as by the powers that it is given. So I think this is the body you are talking about as being the one that your constitution mandates uh, to do some of these things. Then uh, the, 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 it also talks of the National Elections Board. Just, so I just give you a input. tick. Yes. Yeah, on that National Executive Committee for the benefit of the members, I like to tell them who constitutes because then people will be like, what is this body? <laughs> <laughs> that body consists of the party leader, the deputy party leader, and I'm reading from the constitution. Yeah. Uh, party leader, deputy party leader, the national chairman, chairperson, the secretary general, national treasurer, national organizing secretary, the director of campaigns, the secretary for women affairs, and the Secretary for Youth Affairs. That is the composition of the National Executive Committee. I thought it's just good for the members to know which offices. They are not just people that I pick from anywhere. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for that clarification and bringing the members up to speed. Now, Maureen, then, can I also make an, uh, a, 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 sure, a bit sure, of clarification? Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I I go back a bit to the disability point. The mm -hmm. question does does indicate uh, in Article two sixty. It does define how disability would be defined in this case and in this country. Article two sixty. Let me let me mm -hmm. find the article. Yes, Article two sixty. Uh, mm -hmm. It reads: uh, Disability includes any physical, sensory, mental, psychological or other impairment, condition, or illness that has or is perceived by significant sectors of the community 
to have substantial or long-term effect on an individual's ability to carry out ordinary day-to-day -day activities. And that is Article 260, which defines disability, but not a person with disability. Yes. So we have to yes. be very clear that we are then defining disability and not PWD. You get the difference. Okay. Can we then say that any person who has these conditions is a person with disability? Then you must make that very clear, yes. So that's what I was, what I was talking about, clarity. Sure. Yes. So let's, let's be very clear because when things, you know, when, when you choose uh, somebody with a disability and the person has probably a mental issue like uh, autism, and then somebody goes and challenges it and says that even the definition you have here it is not in the constitution. You know, those are the little things that sometimes drag us back. So clarity is very important. Okay. So next organ you have is the National Elections Board. And um, again, this is described as the, uh, um, the organ to which functions and powers of the National Executive Committee as far as relates to nominations and elections are delegated. Uh, it's a primary organ for purposes of election or selection of the presidential, deputy presidential, uh, and gubernatorial nominees. Now, there's a gap there. Are they only for those uh, three, uh, three positions? We have to reconsider that. And then it is the final authority empowered to receive the reports of the nominations from the counties and report to the National Executive Committee. So there's that gap uh, that I've identified that it's only talking about the presidential, the deputy president, and the governor. What about the MPs and the MTA and the senators? So let's consider that as we continue uh, looking at the document. Then the third organ is the County Elections Board. And uh, this is an organ of the party to which the functions and powers of the National Executive Committee through the express directive of the National Elections Board, as far as relates to nominations and elections at county level are provided for, so are delegated. So this again is a county election board. Uh, it doesn't say clearly which elections it refers to, but at least it defines the body, which is good enough. Uh, then we have the National Appeals Tribunal, uh, to which the functions and powers of the National Executive Committee are delegated as far as relates to the role of receiving and discharging disputes in relation to party nominations and elections for candidates. So again, I think that is okay. The only question that comes there is, does that mean uh, it's not devolved? Does the one national mean it sits at the national center only? or is there a provision for devolving that unit? Uh, those ones you can consider as you relook the rules. Now, we go to the next slide that deals with eligibility for nomination. Now, eligibility criteria is that a person must be a citizen, must be a registered party member, uh, must be qualified for the position they are vying, uh, and is a registered voter, and has signed the pledge uh, of the party pledge. So uh, this is there and this makes sense. I just don't know whether you might want to qualify a registered party member. Do you want to provide a period or you're happy leaving it blank like that? That's something you can consider. And then uh, must have been proposed for nomination and is seconded by a minimum number of registered party members as applies to the, the particular position. Uh, then you have a repetition of one, seven, eight, and nine are repeated, so should be deleted from the document. Uh, and then number 10 there is, has been proposed uh, and supported by an, a minimum number of members. So those I think are quite fine and clear. Uh, probably just uh, the clarification of has been a party member, can I join today and buy? Although I've seen that happen as well. So maybe leaving it open is also not a bad thing. Uh, then we go to seconders, uh, how many people need to second, and I see there for every position it is two members. Everybody needs two seconders to be able to apply, uh, to join, uh, uh, to be an aspirant. And then we have supporters. Now, you also need, apart from being seconded, you must go to the ground, now Tafutewatu, so you must also get, for president, 1,000 signatures, for governor, 500, for senator, 500 for women rep 500, 
uh, for National Assembly Rep, uh, 200, and for County Assembly, 50. So if you're happy with those numbers, they can stay like that. I just don't know that uh, if it is a president, can I get them all from CIA where I come from? You may need to clarify that, uh, that they must show some sort of diversity or something. Uh, like if I'm a, a governor, can I just get it on from my sub county? So we've got to probably clarify that, but the numbers are good enough. Now, when it comes to disqualification, uh, I think here we, we actually just set out what is in the constitution of Kenya, uh, basically mostly. So we say a state officer or is acting in any state office, uh, someone who's been subject to imprisonment over six months, Although the, 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 the language there is not making sense, uh, we've got to look at it again, because when we say by such a court, is subject to a sentence of imprisonment exceeding six months imposed on him by such a court, it's hanging. So let's, let's go and look at that and reward it and get it uh, clear. Then we've got of unsound mind, a violation of chapter six, become a bankrupt, has not paid the nomination fees, uh, has not produced all the documentation, or is by virtue of his own admission uh, subscribing allegiance to another political party. So I think those uh, are, are fine. Then exemptions to qualifications is uh, uh, subsection 2.2, which says that you, can, you are disqualified if you're a state officer, will not apply to a president, a deputy president, a governor, a deputy governor, a member of parliament or a member of county assembly. The question that came to my mind at that point was, is it for sitting uh, office holders or former or future? I mean, it's, we've got to clarify that because I think it applies to the sitting uh, holders of this office. So let's make that clear if we can uh, going forward. John, you want to say something? Okay, I saw your hand up. But I think you're just stretching. <laughs> I was just stretching. Thank you. Thank you. If you are, when you are future or past, you are not mm. a member. A me no, the you... president is, is as we know it, and a member is a sitting member. Otherwise, if you are retired or you are spitting and uh, fighting to be one, you are not yet there. Unajua is like this Mweshimiwa word that is being misused. So a <laughs> member <laughs> is a member that is current. <laughs> but I think let's just clarify it because uh, those those sometimes become loose ends. When we say the law is very clear, then it doesn't become so clear sometimes because of just little things like this. So application for nomination, um, here, I think we've got a typo that we need to deal with, uh, Mr. Chair and SG, uh, if we can expand that from our document. Uh, then, okay, the procedure for applying uh, shall be to submit with the application a duly completed and signed code of conduct, which is good. Then the four three doesn't make sense. Party may require in the application accurately and truthfully. I don't know what was intended to be conveyed there, but it, it needs to be looked at. And then uh, submit his application to the National Election Board within the time frame published by the National Elections Board, and that's fine. And then pay an, an application and nomination fee as shall be determined by the National Executive Committee. And that's fine as well. What I can say at that point is what I didn't see in this document is provision for waiver of, uh, of uh, fees for certain categories, if any. Do we want to consider waiving fees for any category? Is there a possibility of waiver of fees? Uh, we can think around that. Mm -hmm. So then the next slide is about forwarding of the list of aspirants. Once people have applied, uh, the National Election Board compiles the list and forwards the list to the National Executive Committee. Uh, what is missing here is timelines, uh, or will the timelines be determined at that time? I think we need to have timelines that upon this, they must forward the list within so many days uh, so that the process runs smooth and we can actually uh, understand by when we expect our names to have been forwarded to the National Executive Committee as aspirants too. 
and then party organs for nominations and preparation of nomination list and certificates. Uh, now again, we come back to describing the party organs that shall be responsible. And if we move to the next slide, it talks about the National Executive Committee, which is one of the organs. Uh, and their role is set out as receiving the party nomination list. Uh, so they receive this from the National Election Board. And then directions and guidelines. They say they shall give overriding directions and guidelines and shall have the final determination and approval. I don't know whether the party members are quite happy with this because this means therefore that uh, the National Executive Committee can override what has been compiled by the National Elections Board and give a final determination. And uh, the fear here is there are no guidelines for exercising this power. It's not a bad power, but within what parameters can it be exercised? When would they exercise it and why and how? So I don't know, you might want to consider those or you might want to leave it as it is, but it would be nice to consider those. And then um, it talks Maybe of the I governor, the put... Senate. Yes, it talks of, let me just finish. Governor, oh. Senate and County Assembly, but not the presidential. Maybe you can talk about that as well as your input. Thank you. Yeah, uh, number one, let me apologize. I think, uh, you know, uh, you were around in 2017 and you saw how political parties were being uh, harassed and some people had to spend a few nights in jail. And yes. uh, for the title, I think probably the document that you have, uh, it's not, I think this, uh, the one that is, I don't know if that one is received by ORPP, but anyway, there's a point at which, you know, like what you're saying, especially if I can take you back to the members, Mm. Is it an MCA? Is it current, future, what? You know, those mm. things, they're the ones that were making some of the officials of the party to mm. stay a few hours behind bars. So the parties okay. had to come together. The parties had to come together and harmonize. And I think it's at that point that our secretary caught something that was proposed by Jubilee, and then he put it there, but that was not the working document. So... On these, some of these things, like it, like it is, is more of a framework. And the moment you go to specifics, trust me, it puts you in a lot of trouble because then you cannot move. You can imagine people just decide they are not happy with you. Where do they run to? And then you are given 48 hours to clear the mess, start the entire process. So you can understand why the language in the nomination rules is a bit, you know, not mm. exactly so adamant. Okay, I hear and you. And that's where you get like the National Executive Committee can get such powers because then you are able to make a decision. Otherwise, you have to go all the way to, to the grassroots. Imagine you are sitting in Nairobi and you are told, okay, there is a dispute in CIA and you need to rectify it in... Uh, within 24 hours, what do you do? You go to the mm. National Executive Committee. That's all I wanted okay. to clarify about so it. Probably, I don't know. Is there a way of summarizing those instances? But it's up to the party, it's your document. Uh, uh, yeah, so I understand exactly what you're saying because there are timelines sometimes and then some, uh, you, uh, yeah, the party sometimes just needs to impose its decision on, on the party and, and move on. And yeah, so I understand. And because also, some, and, also sometimes you can discover I'm a mole. I'm, I'm actually there in the party, but I am not. Uh, I'm not for the party. I'm there to spoil the party. So and especially nominations. Sorry to say, especially nominations are very expensive. You know, they cost. If you you are to run a proper nomination in just one word, you need nothing less than a million. Then you've wavered, you know, a youth has given you 15,000 and they want to drag you yeah, forever wanting uh, nominations of 2 million every two days. Where do you get it from? You have to make a decision and move on. I hear you. you. I hear you. There are also financial implications. So anyway, the functions of the National Executive Committee continue. Uh, they also review candidate suitability. And I think this is where you're talking Probably about... Uh, Yes. Go ahead. 
Hi, Rosalind. If yes. I could intercept a bit, a bit. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm just, I'm just curious to understand what, what recommendation would you have at this level? For, for the overriding decision. For the wording that we have, exactly, exactly that one. You know, I cannot. So it is, it is okay to have the overriding power for the National Executive Committee. And as the SG has explained, sometimes there are very good reasons for doing it. Uh, so to, to kind of tamper with it, I would probably uh, need to sit with you guys and hear your views and then we want it to, to actually convey what you want to say. It's not a bad power. It's a necessary power. But what I was talking about is limitations. Within what parameters do we hold this? And those parameters, I cannot set them for you. But when we sit and discuss, and Lillian, you're free to call me later to a meeting with your NEC. I will not charge you. We can talk around these things and see how to input them. OK? Yeah, so thank you. So the functions of thank NEC. You. Thank you so much. Uh, the other one is to review candidate suitability. And um, they say that uh, somebody whose candidature is not in tandem with the party's principles and aspirations uh, can be barred from being a, a suitable, uh, from being a, an aspirant or a candidate for the party. And I think this is now one of the overriding powers uh, that uh, the, the, the document gives to the NEC. Then we have the functions of the National Election Board. Now the National Election Board now announces the timetable uh, prepares the budgets and manages the nominations, the materials, directions, guidelines, and things like that. That's factors of the National Election Board. Then it provides oversight uh, on, the, on the entire process and vets the candidates and uh, the, uh, comes up with the list of the, uh, vets the aspirants, comes up with the list of uh, candidates and does everything around oversighting. Uh, then in terms of the presidential and governor's nominations, they arrange for and uh, fair, there's a language area, grammar area there, arranging for and fairly and transparently, uh, conducting the nomination elections for the presidential and gubernatorial positions. So I don't know why they had to separate these two from the others, but uh, yeah, I think it was intended uh, with good intention. Then they receive results, they receive the provisional county nominations list, uh, this is the, the party list. They receive the results of the of the primaries and they also receive the party list. And then they prepare the provisional party list and sign the same and forward them to the National Executive Committee. Uh, then they issue the nomination certificate. So those are the powers of the National Election Board. Uh, then we have the functions of the county election board. Uh, they oversight elections at the county. Uh, they make sure that the nominations take place properly. They report uh, to the uh, national elections board how the process went. Uh, they provide provisional county party nomination list to the national election board. And they can also do any other function that is assigned to them by the national election board. So the slides go on to talk about the, the, the rules, not the slides. The rules go on to talk about the National Election Board. Now, how does it conduct its business? It must, among its order of business, formulate rules and procedure for the conduct of its affairs, which shall be subject to the overriding guidelines of the National Executive Committee or National Chairman. So they will set rules on how to conduct their affairs, and once they set their rules, they must submit them to the National Executive Committee or the National Chair for approval. Uh, then they must report to the National Executive Committee, which shall consider and where necessary. Sorry, uh, Maureen, your slides, I'm ahead of you. So I think people are not even following what I'm saying. Yeah. Shall consider and where it deems necessary, act on any report of the board. So I, I don't know whether this is too broad, but it is okay. It can stand as it is. Uh, then the next slide, Maureen. 
forms for processes, the National Election Board shall prescribe forms and other documents needed for nominating party candidates. I don't know whether prescribing here means uh, they should also design and set them up or the forms will already exist and they will just be saying you need to fill form one, two, three, and four. Uh, I, I hope that is the case and not that they are the ones who are going to be developing the forms. And then when it comes to the nomination certificate, uh, the National Election Board shall design the nomination certificates in respect of any election and shall only issue a certificate to a candidate duly elected. The certificate issued uh, shall be signed by the national chairman and the secretary general as the only authorized signatory. I like that you have provided for authorized signatories very, very clearly so that there's no doubt as to who signs that nomination certificate. And I believe the idea of designing a nomination certificate with every election is so that somebody cannot go and pre-design one and run to get it uh, signed. So I think that those are very good provisions and I applaud you for them. Uh, now the county elections board, uh, their duties are to conduct, uh, also formulate their rules for conduct of their meetings, just like the national election board, and to report to the national election board anything that takes place at their level. Now, the Cati Election Board shall use such forms and documents needed for nominating uh, party candidates. So they, they, here it is clear that they are not developing or designing. They will use the forms that are already in place and have been identified. And then shall supervise the, and the due and expedited issuance and return of these forms. So they are in charge of uh, ensuring that the county processes move with speed and uh, within the timeline. Now, then there is a heading that still talks about specific functions of the National Election Board. Now, the specific functions of the National Election Boards shall be to appoint one returning officers, uh, presiding officers, clerks, and other officers uh, for the nomination process to take place, for the primaries to take place. Uh, the board shall also receive appointment of chief agents and approve them uh, for every level of candidate. It shall vet and deploy returning officers, presiding officers and clerks, uh, or reject. They also have the power to reject anyone who applies. So they vet, approve, or reject uh, those group of people. And then it has a duty to sensitize all aspirants on the nomination rules. So this is a very big duty because I don't know how they do this sensitization, and whether the timelines we normally have run up to our elections give them time to sensitize. Uh, you may wish to consider this because somebody may just go to court and say we were not sensitized, therefore the whole thing is flawed. So you may want to consider whether this is a job of the National Election Board indeed, or members are need to sensitize themselves on the contents of the nomination rules. Uh, you might want to consider that. Uh, when it comes to the uh, nomination guidelines, then the national election boards will formulate guidelines in accordance with and so as not to be in contact, uh, conflict with these rules to be known as nomination guidelines. These relate to logistics and other issues. And uh, I think that's very, very important. And it also says it will address any gaps that are found to exist in the rules. So I think this is a very, this is what you, you call the clause that is the saving clause. So where any gaps exist in these rules, then the National Election Board is given the power to fill those gaps in guidelines. And I think this is a very useful provision that you've included in your rules. And please don't drop it even if you're dropping anything else. It's a very useful provision uh, to fill in uh, those gaps and address them. Uh, ADR, it provides that the National Election Board can provide or shall provide alternative dispute resolution mechanisms and can facilitate that dialogue between the board and aspirants at the ground. So again, this gives leeway for resolving disputes in an amicable manner without having to be contesting every issue that arises. Then the national election boards also present the list of candidates to the national executive committee. And uh, again, here the presidential election is left out, uh, maybe intentionally, maybe not, uh, just go back and look and consider whether that was intention. Now, 
why I've highlighted in the next slot 13.9 monitor and report, I think that should be the National Elections Board, not the County Elections Board. Uh, because we are here, the main topic on this part of the, of the rules is talking about the National Elections Board. So we might want to amend 13.9 to say the National Elections Board shall monitor the nomination uh, processes within the county and report to the National Executive Council within 48 hours. At this point, I wondered whether you would want to invite uh, independent observers and monitors to your primaries, but that's something to think about. It's not necessary. It's just something that came to my mind. And then the other function of the board, and uh, National Elections Board, is to receive results for all the positions uh, that people buy. And then their final role is to issue nomination certificates. So that is it for the National Election Board. Any comments up to that point? Hello? Hello. Comment. Any comments or can I continue? I have a comment. Hello. Go ahead, Hello. go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I feel that it was good if there was provision for the payment for different aspiration or elective positions. Payment. Okay. I think there's a there's a, a clause ahead that talks that the National Executive Committee can from time to time set the schedule of fees payable. Hello? Yes, hello. Yes, yes go ahead. There was a... Okay, I wanted About to... separation of duties, I have noted... Lillian, are you the one speaking? I have noted that the National Executive uh, Board, National Ex Yes, yes. Go ahead. National Election Board is also the same. Mm -hmm. It's also the same body that is uh, concerned with the dispute resolution. And that may not be in line with what you had originally advised about separation of duties. Okay. Now, this is not the internal dispute resolution, but it is facilitating mediation uh, before we go for internal dispute resolution. So that when there are two aspirants, for instance, having some small issue, maybe around their campaign schedules or their supporters, they can come to the National Elections Board and it can mediate the issue. So it is uh, mediation with, at that level before a matter is taken to the IDRB uh, for resolution. Uh, do you understand? There's a, there's a difference between the two. As I well read noted. your nomination rules. Yes, thank you. There was someone else who wanted to yes, speak. Yes, well noted. Thank you. Thank yes, you. yes. I wanted to give my input over the the second last page. Eh? Yes. Where you, where you talked about the National Election Board and there was something like the county. Yes, I, the I passed, report. Yes, exactly. I, I realize it, it, it's the county which is reporting to the, to the National. I only wanted to make that clarification. And then over the issue of, there is a, the other issue we talked about, the executive. Eh? And then there is, the, there is another board you say that will be uh, over the one you are arguing with, uh, talking, uh, the, the one you say that you don't know uh, to what parameters they will be. They will be doing their duties. I felt like, uh, I think uh, majority of political parties in this country always uh, 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 get difficulties to do with that. For instance, assuming like I am I'm, 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 I'm a candidate, uh, and um, I'm popular on the ground. You get, mm -hmm. and then, uh, and then, 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 uh, the party or the decision of the party uh, mm -hmm. the, or, on the other side uh, decide to give the nomination papers to another person. So you get, we have a conflicting situation because maybe the board will go and decide that uh, we want to, 
we want to pick this uh, particular candidate. So I, I was really thinking like um, the the measures that uh, will be taken with the uh, the, uh, the overall body. Uh, actually, the measures should be be very clear because uh, most of the time you get they they might be conflicting and all that. Thank you. Are you done? Yes, 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 I'm done. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your comment. I'm sure we will put that into consideration uh, when uh, we now get into the nitty gritty of actually amending uh, the rules. So thank you for that input. You, you're asking uh, that the parameters be clarified because some candidates get uh, marginalized. So yes. I'm sure the leaders are listening and they shall consider that as well. Because uh, they also explained why the, the rules are the way they are. So I, I think we're going to have some sort of uh, negotiation around this. Now, when it comes to the county elections board you've talked about, um, at this at 13.9, we are talking about functions of the National Election Board. Uh, and it provides that, the, there it writes, the county election board shall monitor the nomination process and report to the National Executive Council. You can see that, that is, there's even a clear uh, vacuum there because a county election board would then have to report to a national election board. So I think this is just an error. The word county should be replaced with the word national because we are talking about the national election board here. We are going to talk about the county election board later. So I believe this was just a typo uh, in that instance. And it is only the national election board that actually reports anything to the National Executive Council. So thank you for that. Uh, then we move to the next slide, slide number, the, the slide on the functions of the CEB. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, again, we find here the, the, the work of sensitizing the people nomination rules. Uh, I, I repeat the comments I had earlier, and let's reconsider uh, these as we go forward, whether it is very necessary to have this or not. Uh, then... Um, when it comes to nomination guidelines, they are supposed to augment the efforts of the National Elections Board at the county level towards ensuring that the guidelines are, it's not, the word there should not be affected, it should be affected efficiently at 5.2, to ensure the guidelines are efficiently affected. So we, let's uh, make that typo uh, uh, clear. Uh, then uh, it also talks about ADR. So at the county level also, we can have uh, alternative disputes uh, uh, going on, resolution mechanisms taking place so that we can have mediation, we can have reconciliation, we can actually help members to see eye to eye on certain issues that are not very major. Uh, then it also is supposed to facilitate dialogue between the board and aspirants. So keep people talking, keep people knowledgeable, keep people going and knowing what's going on uh, so that uh, there's, there's constant communication and, uh, and uh, information. And then it has the duty of preparing the county list of aspirants and sharing that with the National Election Board, uh, which I'll look at it and probably send it back. Now, but when you look that at the second last line, it says, and present the county kissed of all aspirants. Again, there's a typo there, we should read list of aspirants. So yeah, that, that can be done and looked at. That's just a small typo. And then the final duty is to monitor and report. Again, it's the same role. So you'll find that the county uh, board has just the same roles as the national executive board uh, almost, but, uh, but at the county level, but they report to the national executive board and the National Executive Board reports to the National Executive uh, Committee. So it's, it's a hierarchy and it actually falls within the critical aspects I mentioned, that a party needs to have the governing body, which we have here in the form of the National Executive Committee. Uh, then we have the Elections Board in place. Uh, then of course we have the IDRB, which we shall talk about later. So I think uh, you're doing very well in terms of just setting out the framework as it should be uh, for carrying out a free and fair nomination. Now, the next thing we look at is the party register. Now, it provides that there shall be a principal register of party voters. 
and this register shall uh, there shall be four types i think there are four types uh, there's the poll register in respect of every polling station there's a ward register there's a constituency register and there shall be a county register Now, what is not clear, and a register, or they have five, and a register of voters residing outside Kenya. Now, it says that the National Election Board shall prepare the Kenya National Congress principal register of voters. There's just a small typo there, which is actually in the document. We shall comprise of. So the principal register has sub registers. SG, if you could just explain that to us, please. Um, basically, what he's talking about, you know, when you're registering members, if you were to go to the IPPMS, then number one, you are Kenyan. And then the principal register is kept and maintained at the ORPP office, who's the custodian of a party register. But then there is need, especially with this, uh, how our, with our devolution system, if I can use that you need to know who's in which county because when you are allocating membership, you're not going, if uh, you can register someone today is registering from Wajia, the other one is registering from uh, Kitui, you know, they're following each other. You need to separate who is from Kitui County and if it's Kitui, which sub-county of Kitui. That way, when you are giving it, you know, we've had issues, especially in nominations, whereby they say people from outside are, are voting. So if they have the polling station register, then they're able to know this is a register here because politics is local. Thank you. <laughs> I think, uh, I don't know if I've answered all. Excuse. I've left so some have, drink. Have, have you Excuse? managed to maintain? Okay, go ahead. Who yeah, maybe to interject, Jackson. Jackson, yes maybe to interject on the issue pertaining principal register. Mm -hmm. I understand that a principal register is a harmonized register, which includes all the details of the party members who are likely to be the voters at the party primaries. Should be held custody by the national executive, I mean a national election board. I think that is the right okay. preposition. Thank you. I think, Jackson, I think where you are is where I was also, that there must be a principal register, which is a harmonized register. Then we have all these other registers as well, which is extracted, which in data is extracted from the principal register. Yes, what we have as a party, every party, what it has is a principal register. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. That one you can go to ORPP and time and get it. That is mm. the mother register, that one is there. But I was yes. breaking down on how these other ones are done and the importance of it. Okay. And how, how, how effectively have you been able to maintain the registers in your party? We are doing well because uh -huh. I can talk from a point of authority especially mm -hmm. if you notice those ones who, have who are just coming in, you will realize that your number starts with K and C, then it will be the zero something, which is the county from which you come from. Wow. Mm -hmm. Then it will be your membership number. Mm -hmm. So that way it's easy if you, like now if it's people from Kisi, it will be K and C 045 then something. So okay. that's what we are doing. I mean, we thought that will work. And I it's working so far. Good. No, that is good. And is it an online register? Can I log in and find out if I'm a member today? Actually, we have our secretary for information and, and uh, publicity who is in the house and they can confirm that he's working on the online let me let me inf, uh, invite Ongoro to shed light on that. Since he's present, let him tell us what he's doing and how far it is. Thank Karibu you, Ongoro. Yes, Asante Sana. Uh, as, as we speak, 
the the if we can see your face please on... unmute and un un unmute your video yeah there i am <laughs> i i was saying that uh, as we speak now the system is not yet online but uh, the conversations we've been having with the secretary are far reaching in terms of uh, how we want to implement uh, ICT, starting right from um, web design to use of uh, social media, email, and basically creating the ability to deliver information to members so that um, you, you, you have a portal where you can be able to interact directly with the party. And uh, the process is that, like I said, it, start, it has started. Just earlier this morning, we had a conversation uh, with the secretary in terms of what we want to include. And uh, how we are doing it, we are first developing what we call um, a user specification document, which first describes all the services uh, ICT services that we want. Once this document is ready, then we share it with everybody. We get input, which then um, gives us the green light of the features we need. And then we start um, the process of uh, actual implementation. Secretary. Thank you. So you can uh, get it that it's work in progress. And trust me, we've given what he didn't say. We've given us ourselves a target of up to mid of next month so that we can roll it out and uh, we move to the platform, which is a step that I think uh, is ahead of uh, many other players in the field. Thank you. I don't know if we've answered all, uh, there is something more we need to clarify. Madam no, Rosin. You have answered and I'm happy. I think you're making very, very good progress and I, I commend you and applaud your party. Thank you very much. Okay, so we, we go ahead with the party register. The next slide, please, Maureen. Now, the contents of the party register, the rules provide that uh, the Kenya National Congress register shall contain such information as shall be determined by the National Executive Council. And then it's, it goes ahead to provide that registration of voters and revision of voters under this regulation shall be carried out at all times and shall close one month or such at the times as the National Executive Committee determines. So, Registration is, is continuous uh, according to this. And uh, I don't know whether this is a register of voters or a register of members, because I, the, the other one, the principal register was a principal register of members, is it? Or is it a principal register of voters? Or are the two words interchangeable? Okay, those ones are interchangeable. By the way, because as a party, there is no point of having members who are not voters. Then it doesn't really entrench democracy. So for purposes of consistency, would we consider sticking to one nomenclature? Uh, that's very that much is, acceptable. That, that's something you can consider uh, within the party or just maybe make it clear that the party register shall also act as the party voters register, just a clause like that. Actually, that, that one came because we are talking about uh, the elections board and yes. those other things. Huh? So yeah. when we are talking about the elections board, it's good to specify to make our register, the membership mm. register, a voter register. Yeah, so, so we that can we just don't have to have another. Yes, mm. so that we don't have another where someone is saying, okay, now this uh, member register, but I've not seen the voter register. <laughs> it is true. So yeah, let's just have a clause making it very clear that the party register of members shall be the party voters register or something like that. Okay. Then, uh, then it goes on to say, this 8.2, I found it very, next slide, please, Maureen. Any person, 
who has attained the age of 18 years and is the holder of a national ID or passport, and whose name is not on the register of any other political party in Kenya, may be registered as a voter. Do we see the danger there? That's a typo. I, no, do we? Yeah, yeah because if, you, if I, I'll be registered just as a voter, but not necessarily as a member of your party. Maybe so, uh, to give a direction, mm. maybe it will, I think it will help the, the, the SG and the rest of the executive to do it well. One should be uh, first start to be a member before you graduate to be a voter. So it is also good to presume that every member should remain a, a party register, I mean a party registered voter. So it is good to say that uh, any member who apply or upon application of membership shall be either after verification, should be qualified or maybe approved to be a member, then shall follow that it will be, uh, the same member shall be a voter on the same. Thank you. Yeah, I, thank you. Thank you for that input. I know uh, the leaders are listening, but that that eight two worried me a lot. So let's let's look at it and see how we can uh, improve it. Let, let me let me let me also have some small input on um, the distinction between a member and a voter. Mm. You know, we, we we try to make rules that are easier to implement. For me, my assumption is that when you become a member of a party, uh, automatically you are a voter in that party. Why do yes. I need again to apply for me to vote? So, so, so for me, I will uh, suggest that um, we automatically assume, like uh, the previous member said, that once you are a member, you should vote okay. without, um, you know, bringing in extra rules that then make it difficult for our members to vote. Okay, we hear you. Uh, thank you for that input. Any other input or can I move? Well, what I can uh, say uh, is this uh, nomination rules, which are in tandem with the uh, party constitution, and especially on what we are talking about is spelled out very well in Article 3 of the party constitution. So in case, which is basically now the supreme law of the party, and uh, if such things come, then we refer to the constitution on what it says about that. So it's also taken care of elsewhere, which if there's an ambiguity in the nomination rules, we shall refer to the constitution. Thank you. Thank you, SG. Thank you for that clarification. Um, Was then if, if I could put in something? Yes, uh, go ahead. Yes, Lillian. This, this is Lillian. I think, yes. uh, I think what we are addressing is quite, quite sensitive because this would probably uh, be the window through which any other person can participate in nomination. Uh, and so I would ask um, the youth league leader, that is Onkoba, what is your take about this particular concern? And I would like us to incline towards giving probably a, a solution. What wording would you want this to be so that everything is specific and clear for everyone? Onkoba, kindly give your input and the women league leader, Liz Weru, you are in the house. Most people who are greatly affected by nomination are women and youth. I would really love your input. Enoch, you can yes. start. You can go ahead, Enoch, and then Liz. Uh, 
Ron Koba, are you in the house? Oh, Enoch doesn't seem to be around. Okay, and Miss Weru? Probably Mr. Well, well, you can say a word as we look for those two leaders. Indeed. Uh, uh, I, I should say the obvious that uh, uh, our nomination rules, um, just like other sensitive uh, uh, party policy documents, uh, are undergoing very serious review which is why we are taking uh, today's exercise very, very seriously. Uh, and that uh, uh, probably from my side, it would just be an assurance that uh, after today's session, and like uh, Madame Roslin uh, indicated earlier, we are going to be uh, doing a thorough job uh, of looking at uh, what our nomination rules say and of course getting rid of uh, any ambiguities uh, because this this is a, a document that draws its strength from the party constitution and it mirrors the language that uh, laws and constitutions uh, usually use uh, these never want ambiguities you never want gray areas with this. So when it comes to use of uh, words like uh, voter, member, we are definitely, definitely going to have to get to a point where we become very, very clear, unambiguously clear over this, because uh, these are the issues then that can lead to unending uh, litigation uh, in courts of law and uh, what and so forth. So I'm, I'm just giving that assurance, even as we engage in the conversation that uh, uh, after today's session, uh, which uh, is bringing to light very many uh, important uh, key issues, we'll sit down uh, and, and work on this word for word, sentence uh, for sentence, article by article, uh, to make sure that uh, we have a document that would serve the membership well. Hello. Hello. Yes, excuse yes. me. Okay. I think in search of the light preposition to be used there, I have done an, ins an inscription that every party registered member shall be presumed to be a voter on party primaries and subsequent general elections in support of party candidature. I think that if you consider that, it shall be all right. Thank you. Yes, thank you for that input. Uh, so I think the, the chair has uh, given us the assurance that uh, all, all uh, issues being raised shall be considered and we'll have an opportunity to improve this document and uh, look at it another time. Lillian, you want to say something or I can continue? I have just reached. Uh, I have reached the youth league leader, Enoch, and he is burning to say a word. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Maybe he can say something. Sure. Where is he burning from? We can't hear him. Ah, oh, sure. Thank you. Uh, I, I had not unmuted my microphone. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I'm not. I'm sorry. I spoke without unmuting my mic, so I'll have to repeat myself. Um, I'm saying I'd stepped out a bit, and I'm sorry, uh, but I'm back uh, on the issue of uh, party primaries. I've been applying in that field, uh, and most of the times I've come out injured because of one thing that is. Uh, letting any Tom, Dick, and Harry vote. 
because these are party primary, uh, then it's the party members who are supposed to determine who their candidate should be at whatever level uh, they are voting. The issue of letting uh, any other Tom, Dick and Harry and you know, interference from other parties, uh, it's also a strategy that if uh, we want to field a candidate uh, probably in CI where uh, our moderator comes from, and we think that we have a weaker candidate in ODM, we will send our, our, our KNC members to go and vote for the weaker candidate. And then Rosalind, because he's a stronger candidate uh, from ODM and lose, uh, we get a weaker candidate for, for, uh, who, who, can, who is easily beatable from our end. So the best thing is to let the party members, uh, people who are duly in the party register, vote. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Enoch. That was worth yeah. waiting for. <laughs> if I may say something. Yes, go ahead. Kindly, if we go to, if we scroll back to part nine, where it's written part nine, I think, just above part register. Uh -huh. so that we what don't does it talk it. about? Yeah. It's talking about what you're discussing about is register of party voters register of party voters not party members and that's what i said clearly that now we don't want to have a register of party members separate and the party voters separate what happens in this case is transforming and having the party the register of members which is the principal register becoming a register of voters and where we are talking that any member who has attained, who's a Kenyan citizen, has attained 18 years of age and is a member of no other party in Kenya, a member who's partyless. And that's basically the requirement for you to join another political party. You have to resign, be partyless, then be included in the party register, then you become a voter. So on this one, I want us to remember that we are dealing this particular section is dealing with the party voter. That's why the issue of membership is turned to voter. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh, thank you, SG. I think just for to clear okay. the ambiguity, as Chair said, we will make that very, we'll clarify that very, very clearly that you are a member and then a voter because we already said earlier, we are going to make it clear that the party register is the voters register. So probably we'll just, just add a word or two there for clarity. But thank you, SG, for that input and all members for your input. So going forward, uh, it is provided that uh, the party register shall be open for a period of 14 days uh, for inspection by us. I don't know whether this is applicants or aspirants or members, but uh, by applicants, it says by applicants. So it will be open for 14 days so that people can uh, look at it and, and verify their records. Uh, then it goes on to say that upon the expiry of that 14 day period, uh, then the final list will be, the register will be compiled and it shall be the register that shall be used uh, for election. And it also clarifies that the headquarters shall maintain and keep a copy of the principal register. So after that, we go to the nomination day process. Uh, now, when it comes to the nomination day process, this is now the day, the actual day uh, that the primaries are being held. Can I, can I suggest some? Can I suggest something on the previous uh, slide? Go ahead. Yes, if, go ahead. Can, be, can we be taken back? Okay. Um, where we were talking about uh, 14 days. Okay, so the next the, slide again. Okay. The register open. Yes. I, I noticed that clear that this, and when we're talking about uh, very many people, does this mean this part register will be in specific spaces? Uh, or I, then I think that, should we be able to include? Go ahead. 
Go that ahead. it should be I possible can't... to check this digitally. I'm saying. SG, can you respond? That uh, we should also. Uh, I'm not getting. He's breaking. He's breaking. I'm not getting the question clearly. I think his question is it's that we have like millions question, of members. It's a suggestion members. that. Uh, We've lost him again. I think but what he's anyway, saying is that we we have in very many members, millions. Will they be able to view this register in 14 days? I think that's the gist of what he's saying. And he's asking that will we be able to view it digitally or will the register be available at many different locations so that we can uh, do it simultaneously from different points? Uh, that's good because number one, it will be available digitally. Number two, uh, it's a requirement that uh, every branch, and that's what you were talking about, keep a register that members can view. That's at the local level, and that's why we're even uh, coding our membership so that if it's uh, from Rajonio County, only the people of Rajonio can get theirs. That way it's easier. And then, especially nowadays, you know, uh, even as the party is moving to online registration, even registering members to ORPPs online. So it will be easier just to do it at a button of a finger and you get you access your membership from the particular office that you are in. So it's doable, yes. So I think the member is, yes, go ahead. Sorry, sorry to take you back. Uh, yes. I am Sonia. Yes. I want to do, I want to some questions from the SG. We spoke we some questions that we are talking about. Uh, voters, mem, voters are not necessarily members. So how do you separate the two? Uh, SG, please, can you clarify that? Because it, it sounds a little bit uh, off. If anybody who's just eligible just becomes a voter and omits the original membership from voting. So how do you separate the two? Where is the dividing line? Thank you. SG, that SG, question I, was for can you. I, can yeah, I John, go ahead. Before you say something. Yeah, John, go uh, ahead. I, I think... Yeah, I think what eventually will have to be captured by the rules would be the idea that when you're carrying out a nomination, uh, you want uh, the best person to represent the party in an election exercise. Best in the sense that this would be the person uh, the party believes uh, can win the seat. And to, to, to avoid a situation where, like what uh, uh, Enoch uh, talked about uh, earlier, where you have a likelihood of infiltration, of interference by the competition, you want to be guarded uh, when you're conducting your nominations exercise. Of course, what we have seen play out out here is something quite similar to what uh, uh, Sonia is referring to. Uh, you find that a party says it is holding its primaries, but then even non-members of the party take part in the primary. It, it, that can bring you very mixed results uh, because then uh, you're not sure whether the people who are non-members who came in and took part in the uh, nominations exercise uh, really meant that the person who would eventually win, win, because they could do it just so that uh, a weak candidate uh, 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 comes up. So then what needs to be done, and what eventually has to be captured by our rules, would be to make sure that when you're carrying out a nominations exercise, it will have to be a nomination exercise that is uh, 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 that involves the party membership, um, and 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 perhaps the issue of 
So how many members do you have? So how many are going to take part in this exercise can be mitigated by uh, the thought of what I have seen uh, done before, uh, before a nominations exercise, you can provide a window for these candidates who want to take part in this nominations exercise to go out there and recruit membership. It can be done within this period of nomination or even before, so that you actually have a membership come on board. And since we have the Office of the Political Parties Registrar with a master register uh, uh, of people who are registered in different political parties, so somebody recruits, but makes sure that they are bringing in on board people who are not members of political parties elsewhere. Right. So that if I want to take part in this nominations exercise, Harakayangu na Bidiyangu idea. I go out there and recruit membership for the party, and when it comes to the day of voting, they vote for me. So the other person has to do it also. So that you shield the party from having uh, uh, people who are either members of other political parties or they are not, but are just registered voters who would show up to take part in this exercise. So that eventually uh, our nomination rules should capture language that puts a distinction between party membership who would be eligible to take part in nominations exercises and the general voter as it were uh, uh, that would be my uh, that would be my input well said chair uh, yes just to support what the uh, mr chair is saying hello yes hello? go ahead yeah, it is possible because uh, the party can introduce uh, a resignation form together with the membership application form so that mm -hmm. any candidate who is willing to recruit some members for his support or for the support of the party can first introduce to the members who are willing to join the party, first to resign from their initial parties to join the new party. And that can be done without even the master register uh, from the registrar of the political party. It can be done. Thank you. Okay. I think we are making headway. Sonia, I hope your feel your question has been responded to. Rosin, can I also come in? Yeah, go ahead. Enoch? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, there's another scenario that I've remembered. That of also infiltration from uh, the party leadership. When it comes to now printing the registers uh, to be used during the, uh, the primaries, it so happened that in 2013, we, uh, I was running for the member of county assembly in Molo. And uh, we were told that only party members will vote, but uh, when the register was printed, you realize that uh, the party had interfered with the register itself because they plucked some names, uh, probably they wanted a, a, another candidate to win. So because they know who recruited who, because so they know uh, Jackson recruited Enoch and uh, the SG recruited uh, Roslyn. So we'll deny Roslyn a chance to, to vote in this nomination because we don't want the SG to win. Uh, that also has to, we also have to come up with a mechanism to insulate uh, the register from interference, even from the party leadership itself. That's what I wanted to put across. Yeah, indeed. Uh, if I may just say something quickly. Uh, indeed, what uh, Enoch ra is raising is, uh, is what you get playing out a lot uh, in most of our politics. And you could say at this point that uh, this is something, a feature of our politics that we need to purge. Uh, so as to move closer and closer to uh, having, a, you know, uh, our candidates, uh, our nominees picked uh, democratically. I, I would just want to expand the thinking a little and perhaps draw in the, uh, the example from the U.S. I, 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 I can't imagine a situation where uh, Democrats are holding their primaries and Republicans are showing up to vote. I don't think it happens. 
So probably, you know, there are things out there, there are situations out there uh, that we need to emulate, work towards. So what Enoch says is what I have seen. It plays out a lot. Uh, you have a lot of interference um, where you're talking about a party leadership deciding we are going to have uh, Enoch uh, come rain or shine. Whether, you know, Rosalino Dede's line or queue or number of people is stretching from here all the way to Mombasa, it doesn't matter. So these are the things we are saying we have to purge from our midst, generally, of course, as a country, but specifically as a political party. And perhaps I would reiterate <coughs> this, that speaking for the uh, party national leadership, we would want to as much as will be possible uh, to, to do this uh, the democratic way, to have people, uh, party members, take part in a nomination exercise. If you have in a ward, for example, registered members who are 100, 200, 300, then we are saying these are the ones that should take part in this nominations exercise. And may the best man, may the best woman win, as it were. And indeed, it means that if you present a strong candidate, it's a common sense thing again. You stand a chance of winning the seat. You interfere with it, you have a problem. And we see a good number of examples all over the country about this, even in recent times. A political party interferes with the nomination or the picking of a candidate. The outcome is reflected in the eventual uh, results announced. So I, I think... Uh, uh, we basically have to uh, keep thinking about it, but things that we should do are lacking around us. We know them. We do the wrong thing, we miss it. Thank you. I yeah, think actually. Uh, okay, go uh, ahead. Uh, actually, actually, thank madam. Thank you so much, actually, Chairman. Chairman, actually, I really. Actually, Madam, Madam Rosalind, I don't know. There is another person speaking, so let, let, let me speak. This is exactly the point I was, I was Thank giving. Thank you so much, Bernard Chair. I think. Anya. <laughs> Lillian, I can see Lillian and uh, Saul. Uh, we are scrambling <laughs> for the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you are anyway. speaking. And and it's not, all, it's not the first time, it's been always. <laughs> no, no, let, let me do this. Let, let me, let me, ladies first for today. Let me allow Lillian to speak first and then I'll come in. Oh, yes, the Lillian speaks and then uh, Saul speaks. Okay. Yes. Lillian, go ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, gentlemen. For the first time, you have all agreed to put a lady first. I don't take it for granted. <laughs> much appreciated. <laughs> We always do that. <laughs> now, this is what I wanted to say. Uh, the, the issue of uh, who is voting has been exhaustively discussed, in my opinion. And we do have a number of concerns still outlined. This is my request and my direction thereof. If we could allow Rosalind to get to the end of this document, because we're not very far away, and then we list down all the items that we have, and then we can proceed with it from there. Is that a bad request, or is it agreeable with all of us? <laughs> I, I, would want, I would want to agree with what you have said, but subject to Saul making his contribution thereafter, <laughs> Let uh, Rosaline uh, uh, finish so that uh, Saul doesn't feel uh, uh, ignored. I, I, I don't know. My <laughs> okay, okay. Th th thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. No. I am, I am well guided. I am well guided, Mr. Chair. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. I... There's someone whose mic is bringing us information that uh, should not be for the meeting. 
Oseko or Kindle, if you can hear me, kindly mute your mic. Thank you so much. Kindly, if you're not speaking, I'm going to kindly request that we all mute our mics and then we give it to uh, Rosalind to finish their presentation and Lian to guide us all. Thank you so much. Uh, Sol is speaking, if he can finish. Yes, I was saying, uh, Madam uh, Roslyn, earlier, as I had, uh, I think the, the point we have been rotating upon is the point I had already brought earlier, uh, speaking about a very nice candidate on the ground, but now uh, because the party has, uh, uh, I'll, call, I'll, I'll just say some sort of corruption, then they, they give it to another person. So you get a conflicting uh, environment and of course, at the end of the day, we will always get wrong results because you you realize this uh, the particular candidate will leave, goes to the uh, come comes as an uh, independent candidate, and because he has the masses, then you find the party has actually lost the candidacy of this particular candidate. So I think that point is very critical, and a lot needs to be done so that we make sure that uh, democracy is always exercised from the from from the uh, the first point to the end point of it. That, that's actually what I wanted to uh, to uh, that, that was the input I wanted to bring. Thank you, Sol, and very useful input and summary to that discussion, Asante Sana. So we move Thank to you. the nomination day process. Um, Kindly, Madam and Rosalind. Thank you, so, uh, SG. So yeah. nomination yeah. day process. Nine is okay. It's just got uh, grammatical errors. Uh, elections is repeated there. And then um, it says the National Elections Board shall announce the nomination day or days which be no more, which be no more. Uh, I think which shall be no more. I think the word shall is missing. Uh, before the day by parties are required. I think the word by which parties are required. So just tidy that up, please, uh, as we move on. And then uh, number 10 is okay. It talks about provision of election materials at least 12 hours before voting. And where it is not received within 12 hours, the National Executive Committee should be advised so that they can give a direction. I think those are okay. Uh, the next slide talks about... Uh, Certificate of receipt of materials to be signed. So every returning and presiding officer must sign a certificate in the confirming they have received all the materials. Now, what I've marked there in yellow, I think is misplaced and should be deleted. Uh, and you can look at that later. Uh, now, number 12 talks about who may enter the polling station and it says only those who are Party voters are allowed to enter, and uh, any person may be as assisting a person with disability may also be allowed to enter. The others must remain within 600 meters uh, of the polling station. Uh, then it provides for strictly no violence, uh, and uh, that is provided there. And then it says that uh, the presiding officer determines who to admit into the station and he can admit at least one agent for each candidate, but that agent must have uh, the letter authorizing him uh, to be a, an agent. So the agent must show to the presiding officer, and I think that's okay. Um, I don't know, just the wording of at least one agent. Can he admit more than one, and in what instances? Uh, that may be outstanding. And then anybody who misconducts themselves or misbehaves at the polling station, may be removed from that station on the authority of the presiding officer. Now we have there at line three, it's written president officer. Let's just amend that to read by order of the presiding officer. Uh, and then 15.2 uh, talks about the removal of uh, people who are intimidating uh, the polling station agents. And I think all this actually echoes what is in our elections act. So I think they are proper and useful for the uh, rules to have those insights. And then a uh, description of the process uh, is outlined there. It shall occur between 6 a.m. and 5 p.m. Uh, at each polling center. Uh, the presiding officer uh, has, can extend the polling by one hour 
where uh, the station did not open in time and you must show the reason in writing. Now the question here was just one hour. What if the station opens at midday because materials were late probably to get to a flood prone area or a remote area? But I think that is covered lower, but I don't know why we had to talk about this one hour here. And then later we say that uh, he may extend the closing time by a reasonable time beyond 5 p.m. where again, there was some delay. So we've got to reconcile 16.11 and 16.12. So that is fine. And then we go to 16.4. Uh, the presiding officer may extend nomination if there are voters still on the queue. And I think that is normal. Anyone who is in the queue within the voting time is allowed to vote. And then every candidate shall be allowed to designate agent and the designated shall be allowed into a polling center. I think that was really also covered earlier. <laughs> And then the candidate the aspirant uh, is allowed to be present also at the, at the polling center if they so wish, or they may be re, uh, represented by their agents. Now, before commencing of the voting, the rule provides uh, that the presiding officer shall one explain to the candidates the purpose and the procedure that's going to take place then you must put in place a system to ensure that no voter can vote more than once at that polling station and uh, provide a place where all voters can assemble in an orderly manner before the start of voting and ensure that the law is strictly observed so that there's a free and fair nomination. And uh, before the voting to start, he must allow the agents and the other observers present at the polling station to look at the ballot boxes and confirm that they are indeed empty and nothing has been stuffed into the ballot box. And then after the ballot boxes are, are certain to be empty, they must put at a place where the agents can have them in their view throughout and ensure no tampering is happening uh, and be able to see that all is going well. And then the presiding officer should announce and post the names of all eligible candidates uh, to those who are there at the beginning of polling. And then they must ensure and show also to this agent and others that the ballot papers are in a serialized booklet and they must ensure that the booklet has all its pages in intact. So the agents should be able to confirm that the booklets are intact. Then the ballot boxes should be transparent. The ballot papers should bear the official stamp of the party. And uh, once this is done, then the uh, presiding officer is uh, can actually declare the polling center open. So he must go through all these steps uh, to ensure it, uh, everything is safe, the agents confirm, and then the polling starts. And this is in line with what happened in our national election. Uh, my only concern at this point is that we seem to be focused on an election through the ballot box only. Is there a possibility for us to consider when redesigning these rules, uh, Buana Chair and SD, the possibility even of digital uh, voting in future, so that we tailor our rules also to think around something more futuristic than just about this kind of election? Uh, that's just an observation uh, that I, uh, that came to mind, uh, because during COVID we've had a lot of uh, online voting, which is very quick, very cheap, and uh, uh, very accurate. In, in various uh, bodies. So continue with the nomination day process at 16.9. It says that there shall be no campaigning at the polling center on nomination day. So is there campaigning outside the polling center? That's the question that comes to mind uh, when I read 16.9. Because in, in line with other elections, campaign stops uh, at least uh, is it 24 hours before the election? So I wonder whether in this instance you can campaign anywhere in the town as long as you're not within one meter of the polling center. So let's think around that. Uh, voting shall be done by secret ballot, and that is uh, okay. Uh, all eligible voters should have identity documents to permit them to vote. And where there's only one candidate 
uh, that present themselves for a position, that person shall be declared duly nominated by the elections board and there shall be no nominations in regard to that position. So that is it about the nomination day process. Should I stop there for comments or should I continue? Yes, I would like to just post a question eh? mm -hmm. about the one meter. Mm -hmm. One meter. Yes. Uh, you, you know, one meter is, uh, even when I stretch my two hands, they are bigger than one meter. So perhaps we should uh, think about that one meter. Yeah, that, that's a very short uh, radius. Hello. Yes. If I may comment. Yeah, according to the rules pertaining uh, elections, mm -hmm. I normally see it for, from the IABC that they normally assume that any campaign should be beyond 100 meters from the polling center on any meeting or any gathering. 100 meters from a polling center. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I may comment. Maybe it's a typo, it should be 100 meters, okay. Actually, from the document, the final document, it's supposed to be one kilometer radius. One kilometer, okay. That's clear. Any other comment? Um, I'm, I'm just wondering, Yes. That uh, that when you look at the the national election laws, eh, we expect that campaigns, uh, you know, are completed a day prior to to the voting. Will it be, um, you know, trying to chew too much if we try and be consistent with that? Okay, your comments are I, noted and will be considered. Mm -hmm. We can continue. Yes, I was just saying, I was saying that uh, the issue about no form of intimidation within the vicinity of the polling center, I think this was a response to what actually happens within an on the actual nomination day. Maybe the wording was not in the right manner, but the the thinking behind it was that the, both the voters, who in this case are the members of the party, and, the, and, and those who will be presenting their names to be nominated, need to know there shouldn't be any co coalition or coercive process within the, within the vicinity. That was, that was the spirit behind that statement, yes. Okay. So, are you therefore saying it, the word come, okay, no campaigning or any form of intimidation. Anyway, we shall tidy that up as we move on. So let's move to counting of votes, uh, counting of votes. Now the, the votes will be counted immediately. Uh, the polling station is closed. So that is at 5 p.m. or when it's closed or sometimes it's earlier when we can see from the register that everyone has voted. Uh, the votes are to be counted at the polling station, which I think is okay. And in the presence of aspirants and their agents. And those are the only people allowed there, including the security and other election officials. Now, the procedure before counting of the vote, uh, again, the presiding officer has a duty to explain uh, to everyone the purpose and procedure, uh, put in place a system to ensure that the votes cannot be destroyed, stolen, or otherwise tampered with. Uh, we've had instances where people steal or even tear votes at the counting hall, so he must ensure that they are secure and then ensure that the rules are strictly followed. I think I've left you behind, uh, Maureen, your slide. Uh, yeah. So that is it, the procedure before counting of votes. Uh, and then 
once the votes are counted, the presiding officer has a duty to record the result in the prescribed form or certificate, and then require each candidate or the agent to countersign that particular certificate, just to confirm. Mm -hmm. Where uh, an agent or aspirant refuses to sign that certificate, it must be indicated that there was a refusal to sign. And then he must immediately issue each candidate with a copy of the duly signed certificate. I think that one should not be duty. It should actually be duly signed certificate. So he must issue that certificate immediately. And then, uh, then uh, the presiding officer will forward a copy of that cert certificate that was signed by the agents and by the others to the presiding officer. And the presiding officer of the electoral area shall, upon receiving the result certificate from every polling center, now tally all the results for that electoral area. And after tallying the results, require each presiding officer to witness the entry of their polling center results into the uh, electoral area result certificate. Uh, and then uh, shall add up the figures and shall issue the winning candidate with a preliminary certificate of election. And uh, the rules make it clear that that preliminary certificate of election is not a certificate of nomination. So that is very clear and I'm sure they have good reasons for making that uh, uh, clear, uh, putting that provision. Because we remember the nomination certificate has to be signed only by the SG and the chair. So the returning officer cannot give you a certificate of nomination. And I think this list also must be subject to some sort of verification before the SG and chair sign the nomination certificate. So I suppose that's the reason we have that rule in place. And yeah, so the other two rules are okay. So continuing with the counting of votes, they say after the counting of votes, a candidate may appeal to the National Elections Appeal Tribunal within 72 hours. So you, one has 72 hours to put together his appeal and, and, file, it, uh, uh, and file it before the National Elections Appeal Tribunal. But once a party nominee is, is identified, he's supposed to be given a certificate within 48 hours. So that's assuming there's no appeal, a uh, candidate has been nominated, within 48 hours of the list being approved, the person should get uh, his nomination certificate. Uh, they require that all the materials should not be destroyed, all the election materials and documents should not be destroyed, but should be forwarded to the National Elections Board office. So from the, from the polling stations and everywhere, they need to secure everything and send them to the Elections Board office. Now, they say that where there is a tie between candidates, there must be a fresh election held within seven days. I don't know whether SG, this took account of the cost of having an election again within seven days. Uh, you may want to consider that at some point. Yeah, if you've gone through a nomination and the timelines, the most, you only have up to seven days to do it because you have to factor in other things like uh, disputes IBC. and all those other, yeah, the IBC rules and, uh, you know, so we don't have a choice on that. That must be very expensive for political parties. And especially if you agree to nominations. You see, that's what I was saying, that the national, that's why it's very important for the party to have some veto powers over some issues. Indeed. Thank you. But, but it's very rare to have a tie, isn't it? Uh, it's very rare to have a tie, but trust me, it can be a tie of thoughts. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you, SG. So that is it for counting of votes. If there are any comments, I'll take them up and then move on to the next. Okay, so we move to the next slide, which deals with appeals. 
Organs, Constitution, Powers, and Processes. Uh, it has a very big title, Appeals, Organs, Constitution, Powers, and Processes. So here we're talking about the power to appeal against uh, the nomination process. And uh, its first thing it talks about is that the rules shall prescribe the fees to be paid. And this fees is, prop, uh, is uh, calculated to cater wholly or partially for the sitting allow reasonable, let me not miss out the word, reasonable sitting allowances for the members of that tribunal. So it's not for the party to make money, but it's to ensure that they can carry the process and pay the people uh, doing it. Now, I really liked 28.2. Uh, because 28.2 says there are no serious formalities about how to, uh, to lodge an appeal. Uh, you can do it in English or Swahili, and you, the, you can just simply write to the appellate, uh, just a simple document saying, I wish to appeal this, but you just set out clearly and concisely the, post that you're con the position that you contested for and the one you want to appeal about, the decision in that uh, nomination, and the grounds on which you are relying. And that's just it. So I think I like the informality of the process as set out here. I think it makes it uh, easy for everyone to be able to participate. Um, the only thing that's missing here is who may appeal. Is it only the, the person who uh, participated as an aspirant or can any member of the party appeal? Maybe we need to just talk around that a little because we know nowadays PIL can be engaged in by anyone who feels uh, aggrieved. Uh, so that any party member who voted and feels their candidate did not win should be able to, to probably approach the tribunal. Uh, then uh, provided that the appeal will not be had, if you have not paid the fees, then the appeal is not considered lodged and it will not be had. One must first pay the fee and that clarification is in the rule. Now, again, here they talked about that if the appeal process determined that that uh, nomination process was flawed or uh, null and void, then a fresh election must be conduct conducted. So uh, that is provided there. There's a typo there that I've highlighted. So null and void, then we must have a fresh election for that particular seat. Uh, 28.4, uh, it says that if the appeal tribunal makes a conclusive determination as to who the winner is, so that if we go there as two people and they say X is the one who won by our looking at this, it is the elections board that has a mandate to declare that person a winner. So the tribunal will only make a finding, but the declaration of the winner is to be made by the elections board. So. Uh, the tribunal does not do this. So what I was wondering is whether we could have timelines within which the election board should declare the person found to have won by the appeals tribunal, the winner. It might be useful to just have a quick timeline added there. Now at 28.5, uh, this is where now the aspirant uh, who, who was declared the winner is found by the appeals tribunal to have secured his nomination through undue influence, corruption, or other fraudulent means, uh, then it shall uh, the, the, the appeals tribunal shall immediately notify the election board, and the election board can therefore proceed to set aside and nullify that nomination and declare a winner or call for re-election. So in that case, the election board has leeway uh, to do either uh, a re-election or declare someone, the person who was coming next, I think the winner. Now at 28.6 is that returning officers and presiding officers shall file their duly signed returns with the board not later than two days after the announcement of the results. So within 48 hours, they must have delivered their results to the elections board. And I think this is for purposes of the elections board submitting those documents to the appeals tribunal and being able to respond to issues at the appeals tribunal. 
Then uh, fees for lodging an appeal, uh, they say the appeal shall be made by paying the prescribed fee. And when we go later to the general provisions, we'll find that the National Executive Committee is given the power to determine fees from time to time. Now, then it talks there of finality of decision subject to interventions of the National Elections Tribunal Board, National Elections Board. Uh, but what is written underneath there talks of the decision of the National Election Appeal Tribunal shall be final. So what I am not clear here is whether they had intended the decision of the tribunal to be subject to intervention or not. It, the title and the wording there do not quite match up and we need to, to actually complete that sentence in relation to the intervention or just leave, remove the interventions and leave it that the decisions of the tribunal shall be final. But as it is now, it creates some sort of confusion in the mind of the reader. So that is it for appeals, organs, constitution, powers, and processes. If there are no questions, I'll move to nomination for party list. Maybe I just move there because of time, and then if we have time at the end, we shall discuss. So nomination for party list. Party organs for nominations to and preparation of party lists are one, the National Executive Committee. Now, I hope we all understand what the party lists are. These, the party lists are the list of persons who will be nominated into their various assemblies and positions. So it's uh, people who shall be nominated to Senate, to the National Assembly, and to the County Assembly. So the organs that are identified here are one, the National Executive Committee, and their role is to receive and consider the provisional party list that it receives from the elections board. Uh, also, again, they have the overriding powers uh, to, to change the list if they find that they need to. So that is the role of the National Executive Committee. The second organ is the National Elections Board, which announces uh, the National Assembly party list nomination day. So it actually sets the days for nomination of people uh, for the party list. We have a typo there again, we are saying part instead of party, and I think that can be quickly corrected. And then uh, the National Election Board, in relation to this uh, development of the party list, shall provide oversight, uh, shall receive the results, uh, shall prepare the list. Uh, these are the provisional list for uh, the National Assembly, Senate, and the County Assembly. Uh, and shall sign that list uh, before forwarding it. So those are the National Election Board role in terms of the party list. And then uh, okay, so those are the two organs that they talk about at that point. And then they talk about party list nomination days. So the National Election Board is required to announce the party list nomination day, which shall not be more than 30 days before the day by which parties are required to have nominated candidates. And I think this requirement is a requirement by IEBC. So at least 30 days before the date IEBC provides, they ought to uh, announce the date for the party list nomination. Now, how is the party list developed? It's developed first by advertising uh, and calling for applications. So those who are interested in being nominated must, uh, must apply. So they have to call for this by announcing in at least two newspapers of wide circulation. ST, I don't know whether this is an unnecessary expense because if you have your party members and you use your party organ to, to call, or is this a requirement by the IBC? I have not seen that requirement before. And I think it's very costly to put this announcement in the newspaper, but. Uh, that's just my personal view. And then uh, provide a deadline for responding, which must not be uh, more than seven days after the call for application. So anybody wishing to apply must send in the application within seven days. Uh, and again, there, I think it should shall be on more, no more. I think the word should have been no more than seven days. And then shortlisting of persons for interview, uh, shall also be done within seven days of receiving the application. So people, there'll be a, an announcement in the paper calling for application. 
uh, once the applications are called for, seven days later, the applications close. <clears throat> and seven days later, uh, the shortlisting is done by the national, uh, either at the county elections level or at the national elections level. So that is shortlisting it done. And then, uh, After the shortlisting, they must again be invited for interviews within another seven days. So again, there's a typo there, it's shortlisting, not short. And then the notice of interviews must be sent to people at least three days before the interview date. Uh, the one thing that stood out for me here was I like the transparency in developing the party list, that people must apply and then get into the opportunity. So I think that's a very good uh, idea and uh, proposition. Now, the National Executive Council have the final say over who is in the party list. So the, the, the process will go, the interviews will be conducted at the county level through the National Elections Board, but, and then they'll compile the list, but the National Executive Council under Rule 36 there have the final say and selection power. And I think this is only proper uh, uh, to give the National Election Committee uh, the power. And then um, it is also required that if they change other, any name in the list, they should give reasons. So I think that's also okay to be able to ele allow members understand uh, why the National Executive Committee probably replaced names on that list. So selection of party list persons, the key guidelines are provided in 38. And it says that the key guideline is one, or that word I think should be that every person, no, not, not very person, every person. But uh, the person shall have applied for the position. So you must apply. Then you meet the requirements for that position. So whether it is uh, the qualifications uh, and chapter six, integrity, all those things, you must meet them uh, then uh, also, the list must represent the diversity of the people of Kenya and regional balance. And then the list must have consideration for youth, women, persons with disabilities, the marginalized and the minority. And then the person listed must have been active in the propagation of the party's principles and objectives on a national scale. So I think those are very useful provisions there and I think very well thought out. And that's for the national, I think, position. Now, when it comes to the county list position, again, the requirements are basically the same as they were in the other slide. And it's the same for national assembly as well. You must apply, you must meet the requirements. The list must represent diversity, the SIGs, and propagating party activities and principles. Now, the interesting provision there is number 41. Those wishing to be nominated will apply at the same time as those who are aspiring for election. This locks out those who went for election and lost from being nominated, or is one able to apply for both? Uh, that's something that just came to mind. But those who probably participated in the party primaries cannot therefore apply for nomination, or can one apply for both, even as they do both? I don't know. We need to clarify that uh, clearly. Uh, the qualifications, uh, it means that the qualifications for the candidates to be on the party list will be the same as that of candidates to the National Assembly, with the exception of the requirements relating to supporters. So people going for elections will have to get those supporters of 1,500, 500, 250, as was set out earlier. But those going for nomination do not need supporters. They just need to uh, have two people, uh, two people uh, nominating them, uh, seconding their, no, their application, and then uh, meet all those other requirements. And then the National Assembly Party List, males and females to alternate. Uh, that's a requirement, and I think that is in sitting with the law. And then the first four candidates to be youth and person with disabilities. I think that's very progressive in trying to get uh, youth and PWDs on board uh, as per the law today. And then National Assembly Party List to have two youth and two persons with disability. That again is in keeping with the law. 
and then ethnic diversity must be uh, uh, must be considered and applied. And then the women's Senate uh, qualifications are, are the same again. Uh, and again, they just do not need supporters, but they must qualify and they must be seconded by these two people, uh, I would say. And uh, number 48, I think there was an error there because it says women Senate party list, male and female to all the need. I don't think uh, that's what is intended because it's the women Senate party list which uh, nominates only women. So there's no alternation. It should be of the male Senate. And... It should be yeah, the Senate party list. Without the male and female to alternate. Yes. Yeah. So that's uh, just to expand that. And I think the idea here was alternating between youth and uh, others, uh, non youth. <laughs> Let me not call it others. Youth and non youth, so that the priority list will, uh, will be zebra between youth and non youth, youth and non youth in that order. I think that's what was intended there. And then the women Senate list to meet ethnic diversity and uh, the youth Senate party list qualifications again, uh, no supporters required. And uh, the youth Senate party list. Uh, now this is where we have male and female alternation again. So again, it's not female nomination, it is male and female to alternate uh, at the bullet there. And then uh, nomination for party list. Uh, the youth Senate party list must also meet ethnic diversity and uh, persons with disability will also have the alternation of male and female. And uh, I think this number 54 is repeated. We talked of the women list meeting ethnic diversity somewhere earlier. So we just need to look at that and uh, tidy it up. Now the qualifications for the candidates to be in the National Assembly is uh, the same, only no need for supporters again and uh, must meet uh, compliance and ethnic and di regional diversity. Now, number 58, nomination fees, uh, the national exec executive. This is what I was talking about, shall from time to time determine uh, the fees. So I think this is so that it's not cast in stone and can be considered over and over. And as I said, Iria, is there any provision for waiver for the youth, for instance, or women and things like that? Uh, appeal fees is also set from time to time. And uh, number 60, again, we have a typo uh, which we can deal with. And then um, at 65, we have fees and finances. And the National Executive Committee may issue orders. I don't think that should be may issue orders for the better carrying out of these rules. And so I think the National Executive Committee is given the final power and authority to do a lot of things. So you can make other rules to support these rules and to give them effect. Uh, so I think that can be done as a separate document. And some of the rules they can make are in relation to where polling centers or how polling centers are designated. They can make rules for procedure of appeals and they can make rules around allowances for nomination. And I think they can also make rules around the fees uh, to be paid uh, for all other activities. And then for general provisions, uh, the final part of the document. So all documents relating to nomination shall be declared and forwarded by the presiding officer and should not be destroyed uh, within for a period of at least six months. So they should be kept uh, until six months are over. I suppose this is for purposes of appealing or anybody wanting to refer. Uh, chairman, otherwise direct. I think not direction there, but direct. And then it also provides that these, uh, doc these documents uh, from the polling and the nomination are available for inspection by any member of the party upon request. Uh, and the party can set conditions upon uh, uh, documents or ballot papers can be accessed. And then uh, it provides for disciplinary action for any officer, clerk, or person who in the performance of their duty contravene any of the rules uh, provided herein. So basically those are the provisions in your rules. I think they cover quite a lot of ground in terms of uh, uh, covering the critical areas. Uh, we just need to uh, tighten this to rule out ambiguity and uh, maybe just uh, grammar and probably layout, right? It actually covers 
the ground and are useful uh, and can still be used even as they are for party primaries. So thank you very much, SD and Chair. It's been an honor and a pleasure to take us through this group. Asante. Asante Sana Roslin. That was a good presentation, good uh, check into that the document that we are using. I'm glad that we took the route that we took because I don't think we would have done it any better. As it is, it was good that we addressed the issues as they were coming, in my opinion. So thank you so much for that. Uh, be sure that we will reach out to you to streamline a few issues that have a legal connection so that we don't do things that uh, are not expected of us to do. Thank you so much for that. I think we still have a few minutes between okay. five and seven where any other burning issue that had not been raised at the right time can be raised now. The floor is open for any member, especially if we could hear from a PWD representative. Have all your issues been addressed? And I would also want to invite Liz Weru. Madam Weru, please speak for the ladies. Yes. Please speak for the okay, ladies. Have everything been addressed as per your requirement? Yeah, majority of the items have been addressed, but the only concern is the timelines for at what point do we close our party register before nomination? Good question, good question. I think the SG, when he talks last, he will address that. Any other concern? I think we'll put them together and then the SG will address them. Okay. That is from Liz. I saw, I saw Fred. Fred Owaka. Or Stephen, anything from PWD perspective? Okay, none. Um, I guess we want to interpret that silence means we are content with what we have seen. We are happy so far. And we are glad and we will join the rest of the team management to walk us through the nomination and election process. So, Rosalind, thank you again for your time. Thank you so much, CMD, for ensuring that this has happened. Uh, much appreciated. I want to give it to the SG to give his closing remarks, then bring in the chair. And I'm, I'm seeing uh, the ED, Franklin Mkwanja, is in the house. I trust that the SG at some point will give you a chance to say hi and give a word. So, Bwana SG, please pick it up from there. Thank you, thank you, uh, Madam Anyango. Can you hear me? Well, there are a few issues. Can hear you clearly. Good. There are, uh, there are a few issues that were raised I'd like to address first. Uh, about the voter register, we remember that the point that uh, where we are the voter, car member, and other things, that was the juiciest part. And I want to thank everyone for the input that they, they did. Huh? Mm, it's clearly stated that the voter register will be opened 14 days before the nominations exercise. This is one for the candidates to know who the members are. Cause you know, primaries are for the party and for a party to choose their candidate, it's up to the party members, the party voters. Therefore, in the, you know, in that situation, the party opens its registers at every branch two weeks before the nominations exercise. So if there's any candidate who has an issue, two weeks is sufficient to raise it to the party, whatever concerns they are, so that they can be addressed. And then there was an issue about parties being corrupt and bringing other people. By the way, let's be very clear. If you are a party member, and if you've been active in the party, how are you going to be shortchanged? You know, we should not 
we should not at any cost allow this issue of uh, crying fall over nothing. Because most of the people, democracy as it is in Kenya, you know, I always cry for developing what we call party ideology. But if someone is jumping from one place, then tomorrow is coming with his masses and they're saying, oh, I'm the most popular. And yet there's someone who has been working for the party, then who should the party give the nomination certificate? That should be something each one of us should ask themselves. Wherever you're going to harvest, what is your contribution? Okay? And that's why that issue of transparency comes in. That's where the issue of the National Executive Committee comes in in making the decision because what happens most of the time, you will find that since if I am a candidate and I know you are weak somewhere, I will get someone to run against you so that you don't get the nomination certificate. Then once you don't get the nomination certificate, the other person will step down for the person from the opposing party. Therefore, if you don't even know who the members are, if you don't, if you have two weeks to check on the register and you don't do anything, then you say it's corruption. Honestly, no one can redeem you from that. Anyway, that said, we can check and discuss about it. And then there's an issue about a party list and the time of application where Madame Odede raised a good question because we say the people who are applying for the party list, they should do it at the same time with the people who are running for nominations. I remember the other session we were having about, you know, how, what are the mitigation or mechanisms that a party puts in place? For instance, if we have two people fighting for the same slot, now this one helps the party that one can settle for a nomination so that they can team up. For instance, and where we have most of the time at the county assembly level. So if there are two people from the same ward, then if this one can be, okay, they can agree on themselves. Do you want nominations or do you want one to go to the nomination list and the other one to go to the, uh, to the, to the electoral list? So this way, we don't have to face the cost of which, as it is, all political parties except the two are not getting political fund. I mean, they're not getting uh, funding. So that's why that one is there so that it can be a mitigation or measure. And uh, number three, uh, let me take this time to address and uh, thank Madam Rosalina Odede, whom we have really come a long way in dealing with many of our documents and say, this is part of the policy documents that we are developing as a party. Uh, and we're welcoming each one of you and we try to be as inclusive as we can. And if you can see, we have people from Nakuru, we have others from Kisi and uh, from different areas. We believe as a party, that is the best way of being included. So the only favor you can do for yourself, because when I'm talking for yourself, most of the time people think that the party is the party leadership. That is not it. The party is the membership. And it's you, it's your document. It's you to submit what you want to see, how you want to see your party look like. So kindly join in this development of policy documents because at the end of the day, it's us who are either going to fight. You know, let me be very honest here. There are two things in politics and in life in general. It's either you are, you are serving others or you are being served. So you choose if you want to see it where you can be served, in other words, where you can make decisions or see it where you are serving others, where you are just receiving what other people decide and then you can cry foul. Since we have an opportunity at this point, kindly let us come in, let, let us make our voice count and let us have a principle and let us have our party at heart. And uh, with that, 
I want to invite Bwana Franklin, the ED of CMD Kenya, to address us for a minute. And before he comes, I want to thank him very much. By the way, most of like our party policy documents, CMD is sponsoring the exercise. And this is part of it. We've had one meeting and there are many others to come before we finish. And I hope you can all agree that this is a process that is very necessary if we want to be serious and we don't want to be described as they describe others as uh, briefcase parties, then we have our documentation in place for both right now and for the future. So Bwana Mukwanja, we really appreciate you. We appreciate what CMD Kenya is doing for us. And uh, so far you've been very good partners. And uh, I think uh, you can see that we really need more. We need more of your support. And for us, we are here to, we'll show you the results of what we're doing. So, Bwana Mukwanja, Karibu Sana. And uh, after that, I will invite our chairman to close. Thank you. Mr. Hello? Edi, are you there? Oh, thank you. People are waiting for me. This is very nice. Yes, we are waiting for you. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, sorry, I was uh, committed uh, to something else. I've just been uh, told that I'm being waited for. But uh, thank you for the opportunity. I followed through uh, the conversation uh, very well. Uh, we all appreciate that... Uh, the efficiency and effectiveness of having a good general election begins with a good primaries. Uh, if we don't have good nomination rules for the parties, then we begin to build up negative emotions towards uh, general elections. And the challenge to the political parties, including KNC, is this. Do we have um, any moral authority or moral grounding to criticize IEBC for a poorly done job during general elections when you actually have totally failed on your own party primaries? You can't be the ones to cast the stone. For Christians, they will remember the lady in the Bible, right? When they were challenged, whoever is not a sinner be the first to cast the stone. And I think this is the situation that political parties find themselves in. And as an organization for, of, and by political parties, interested, committed, working towards capacity building of political parties, this is an area that we want to really invest in. So my challenge to you, uh, Chair, uh, Buana Imoite, SG, my brother, uh, Gisore, um, and party members, please continue this conversation at the internal party level so that you can be able to streamline your own internal rules, be able to do conduct a good party primaries, and certainly the voters will reward your intra-party, uh, the quality of your intra-party democracy. The voters will also re reward you uh, by the performance of the quality of the members that you will have gotten uh, elected to various levels of representation. Whether it's in the Senate, whether it's the county assembly, whether it's the national assembly, this will be a good uh, beginning of growth of the Kenya National Congress. So thank you very much also to the facilitator for the insightful uh, conversation. And uh, please uh, continue this good work. Um, and, and let's hope that we can be able to find more and more resources uh, to piece together the important uh, pieces of legislation that require to strengthen the political parties. Thank you very much and uh, have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Banamukwanja. 
just because you are not uh, getting what you are saying, we were appreciating your partnership with helping KNC develop policy documents, which this is part of. And you know, any institution can only be as good as the engagement rules that are foundational in the day-to-day -day running of its structures and processes. So Banamukwanja, you know, this is what we, all, we always want to do. And this is what CMD is there to do. And now, you know, honestly, let's be very honest. You know, KNC is doing it. So uh, let's, let's see what we can do. Let's develop these policy documents. And at the end of the day, we'll also teach our parties how to do it. And our success is your success. And I know you are a man of goodwill. And truly, we appreciate you. We appreciate your staff. And um, let's make 2021 a good, as we have offered to be that, you know, to, uh, to be that guinea pig. Yeah, you can test with, try to see how, you, how CMD can help democracy through KNC. Otherwise, we are very thankful. Maureen, we are always very appreciative. And uh, all of you at CMD and Madam uh, Odede, uh, we can only appreciate you. We like even just your smile. You're just a great person. You take people through three hours, just go like five minutes. We truly appreciate you. Now, let me invite our chairman, Buanai Moite, to close the meeting for us. And uh, everyone who has attended, who has participated, both in thoughts, all in words, all in presence, and some were praying for the meeting to go well, Thank you. God bless you. And uh, you have a prosperous 2021. Thank you, Bwana Chairman. Karibu. Mm, uh, Sante SG. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, first, uh, of course, let me uh, appreciate uh, the party membership, the party rank and file. Uh, Asante Sana for finding time to be part uh, of uh, the uh, this process, which is one of several that we are running, uh, aimed at uh, uh, working on our policy documents uh, so that uh, uh, we are definitely in a good place uh, to be uh, able to compete uh, favorably uh, in the coming uh, the coming elections. Uh, uh, we are in the process of uh, working on uh, uh, other uh, uh, policy documents. Uh, a strategic uh, plan is a work in progress. Uh, we have uh, hit the road uh, with the nomination rules. We are also uh, keen on uh, getting uh, party positions. Uh, to do with the persons with disability, uh, women, youth, uh, and other areas as well. Uh, so this is this is a journey we've embarked on, and we take it very, very seriously. So your participation as party membership uh, is valued, uh, a great deal. And uh, of course, uh, along those lines, I would want to encourage you when you uh, when you are taking part. Uh, bring in your uh, bring in your input. Bring out your input. Say these things, because we don't want just to talk of democracy. We don't just want to talk about uh, uh, these freedoms uh, that our constitution talks about. We want to leave it. So Kiwahapa, you are free uh, to vent, uh, say what you think, because that way again we we end up with uh, uh, a, a party that uh, people can. Uh, can be happy uh, to identify with. Uh, Madam Roslyn, uh, we can't uh, thank you enough uh, for the job you have done. You've done a very good job. And we are cognizant of the fact that, uh, especially for nomination rules, what we are doing uh, and what we'll eventually have will uh, have, have uh, impact. Uh, on uh, other laws uh, that we have on the land. Uh, 
uh, we do not want to have rules that run afoul with our mother law, our constitution. Uh, we have uh, the Elections Act. We have IEBC and its regulations uh, that have to do with uh, elections and, and so forth. We have our party constitution. So we will uh, be coming to you from time to time so that there's harmony uh, with this uh, uh, these things we are talking about. We don't want to have nomination rules that uh, 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 will hit a brick wall uh, when they are to be implemented. So asante sana for taking time to uh, be with us uh, 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 on this. Uh, CMD, uh, Kiongozi Franklin, uh, we appreciate you, like SG has said, uh, asante sana. Uh, uh, we are moving on well. We are happy. Now, Kiona Tunagonga Mulango, we are going to do it uh, again and again. Our aim, of course, like we have said, is to have uh, our party have uh, its structures, policy documents in place so that we compete on a, a good footing uh, with the rest of the people in the market. Otherwise, uh, beyond that, uh, it's just to thank everyone all around. Asante sana for, uh, for, for a good meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, SG. Thank you, Franklin. Thank you so much, Rosaline, and thank you each and every one of us who made this a success. We don't take it for granted. Much appreciation to CMD, the convening body, and the one that constantly supports us. All members, we agree that this meeting is not ending here. The conversations must be taken forward. I want to take it back to Maureen Gichana, who initiated the meeting to close it for us. Thank you, Lillian. Thank you so much, everyone, for making time out of your schedules to attend today's meeting. Indeed, it has been very uh, thoughtful of you guys to, you know, decide to review so that you can strengthen your internal uh, party and uh, your internal nomination and election rules. From Hazia in CMDs to say thank you, Sana, and also we we encourage you guys to continue you know reviewing your documents so that it can actually work for your members we are here to help you we are here for you so until next time i wish you a very good afternoon see you all thank you thank you so Bye, much maureen good afternoon to you all thank you Bye bye. Uh, good day.
Is there a meeting over?